Nate. Rusty's joining the meeting now as well. Okay. So we, we should have everybody. We got two minutes to 1.30, so I'll wait a couple more minutes and then we'll get started. Scott. Yes, ma'am. We are still waiting on Commissioner Powers and LaForge to log into PrimeGov. Okay. Commissioner Powers has joined us. She's on Zoom, uh, but I but we can I can alert her. Hopefully she's listening and she'll know that she's not logged into PrimeGov. If not, we'll just have her voice vote. Okay. It is 1.30, so we will go ahead and get started. Um, if we have a couple technical issues, we can work through them as we move the meeting along, but let's get started. So uh, welcome everybody to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Oklahoma City Planning Commission for Thursday, April the 8th, uh, 2021. Um, we're going to conduct this mini meeting today by video conference in accordance with state statute. And we're going to a couple of announcements here as we get started. If the video conference is disconnected at any time during the meeting, the meeting shall be stopped and reconvened once the connection has been restored. If communications are unable to be restored within 30 minutes, items remaining for separate consideration will be continued until the next regularly scheduled planning commission meeting, which will be April the 22nd, 2021 at 1.30 p.m. That meeting is also scheduled to be held by video conference. The agenda and documents for today's meeting are located at okc.gov. You can navigate there to retrieve them. If you have questions about how to receive those documents or trouble accessing them for any reason during the meeting or afterward, you're welcome to call staff for assistance at 405 297-2623. Again, 405-297-2623. For anyone wishing to speak about an agenda item or to speak under citizens to be heard, hopefully you've previously notified staff by phone or email. Um, I will call on you to speak at the appropriate time. I'm going to allow for public comment on each agenda item, and I will alert you when we're looking for public comment. Um, speakers will be allowed no more than five minutes to comment. When you are called upon, uh, if you're on your phone, you'll push star nine, and that will raise your hand for us to recognize you as a speaker. And then you'll use star six to unmute. If you're on your computer, you will use the space bar to unmute and alt Y to raise your hand. So the alt key and Y simultaneously, and that will both raise and lower your hands. Um, I certainly ask that all participants Keep their phone lines on mute until they're recognized to speak. Please note that commission members will be allowed to ask questions or comment at any time during the meeting. And uh, for anyone uh, speaking today, including commission members, please remember to identify yourself 
Uh, for those of you in the public, we ask that you start by giving us your name and your address for the record before you jump in to telling us what we need to know. And then finally, as a reminder to commission members, please remember that we've agreed to be available by video, which means you need to keep your camera on at all times. If you are gonna step away from the meeting for a moment, grab a glass of water or whatever, uh, just make sure and interrupt the meeting to alert me or anyone else that you're stepping away. Uh, and then if necessary, if we see the video has been off or someone's not been responsive, uh, we'll do a roll call if we have to uh, after 15 minutes. So with that, I'll call the meeting to order uh, and we'll get started. And our first item on today's agenda is to receive the minutes of the March 25th, 2021 meeting. If there's no discussion on those minutes, I'll take a motion to receive them. Mr. Chairman, this is Commissioner Pennington. I move that we receive the minutes of the March 25th uh, meeting. Thank you, sir. I have a motion and I'll take the second on PrimeGov as soon as that option is available. That motion has been seconded by Commissioner Privet. Please cast your votes when available. And Commissioner Powers, I don't see your name on PrimeGov, so how would you like to vote, ma'am? I vote aye. Okay. I believe all votes have been cast. If that's not the case, please let me know. Commissioner Inkle. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Commissioner Inkle. You'll be voice voting as well. My apologies. I knew that. And the minutes are received. Next item on the agenda today are continuance requests. I believe we have four uh, uncontested continuance requests. Mr. Butler, you want to read those for us? Yes, item 18, SPUD 1301, deferred to April 22nd. Item 19, CE 979, deferred to April 22nd. Item 20, uh, case number C7283, deferred to April 22nd. And item 21, case number C7282, deferred to May 27th. Is there anybody that wanted to be heard on any of those items today? I don't have anybody who's raised their hand. If there's no discussion from commissioners on those four, I'll take a motion uh, to grant the continuances as read. Mr. Chairman, this is Commissioner Pennington. I move that we grant the continuances as read. I have a motion and I'll take that second on PrimeGov when available. And that motion was seconded by Commissioner Highsmith. Please cast your votes. Commissioner Hinkle, how do you vote? Yes, please. Commissioner Powers, how do you vote? Aye. I think all votes have been cast, staff. And those continuance requests are approved unanimously. Uh, next item are new requests. I do believe we have two new requests to my knowledge. Mr. Butler, you wanna read those for us? Yes, item 14, case PC10724, continue to April 22nd. And item 16, SPUD 1299, also continue to April 22nd. Thank you very much. Is there anybody that wanted to be heard on either of those items today? Those are new requests. And again, that's PC10724 and SPUD 1299. I don't see any hands raised. Uh, it's all Y on your computer, star nine on your phone. Seeing none, I will take a motion to grant the continuances on those two items. Mr. Chairman, this is Commissioner Pennington. Before I make that motion, which I will do, I do want to encourage my com fellow commissioners. I, I have been in discussions with the developer for item 16, and they, I know that there are a number of changes that are coming to that SPUD due to that discussion. So if you have read that and might have had some concerns as they were voiced in detail in, detail in that report, if you might send some of those to me, that, that would be great. So we can start to make sure that that's that they're that the applicant has heard those concerns. So just wanted to make that known. But Mr. Chairman, I, I move that we grant the continuances as read. Thank you, Commissioner Pennington. I'll take a second on PrimeGov when available. And that motion was seconded by Commissioner Highsmith. Please cast your votes when available. Commissioner Powers, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Hinkle, how do you vote, sir? Yes, please. All votes should be cast. And those continuances are also approved unanimously. Next item on the agenda today is our consent docket. We have four items on the consent uh, docket today. Mr. Butler? Item one is KC7280, final plat of Grace Church. And that is located north of West, West I-40 Highway and east of North Mustang Road. Item two, KC7281, final plat of Prairie Estates, phase one. 
located south of Southwest 89th Street and west of South County Line Road. Item three is case number CE1048, application to close part of Southeast 37th Street um, and part of an east-west easement in block three in Pasadena Heights addition, located south of Southeast Grand Boulevard and east of I-35. Um, and item four is C7284, final plat of Montero phase four, located south of Northwest 150th Street and west of North County Line Road. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll pause just a moment and ask if there's anybody that wanted to be heard today on any of those four items. These items are on the consent docket because they're deemed administrative in nature and there's no known protest. Alt Y on your uh, computer or star nine on your phone. And I see no concerned folks with hands raised. So if there's no discussion for commissioners, I'll take a motion on the consent docket. Mr. Chairman, this is Commissioner Pennington. I move approval of the consent docket as read. I have a motion. I'll take the second on prime gov when available. There we go. That motion was seconded by Commissioner Privet. So please cast your votes when available. Commissioner Powers, how will you vote? Aye. And Commissioner Hinkle, how will you vote? Yes, please. All votes should be cast out. Commissioner Pennington? Gotcha. And those consent items are approved unanimously. Uh, next item on our agenda begins our items requiring separate vote. Our first item on today's agenda is item number five. Mr. Butler? Yes, case number uh, V23 is an application to uh, requesting a variance to section 5.10.4B of the subdivision regulations requiring a water main extension. And the property is located at 8720 Northeastern Avenue. Thank you. Is the applicant with us? Yes, Richard Winblad. Mr. Winblad, if you would give us your address for the record, please, sir. Certainly. My address is 102 East Thatcher, uh, Edmond, Oklahoma, 73034. I also have uh, Raleigh and Janice Frost with me as well, and they reside at the address where the, for the application. Okay. Is there anything you want to add to staff's introduction of your item or anything you want us to know about it? Uh, it's, uh, I think it's fairly simple. Uh, as you can see from the display, the, um, the, the, uh, it's, a, it's a rural area between uh, Wilshire and uh, Britton Road. Uh, currently, there's an existing structure where the, uh, the uh, Frosts have lived. I purchased a property in, in uh, 17 years ago, currently serviced by a water well and a septic system. The reason that they're looking for this variance is uh, Mr. Frost is a, a disabled veteran and his daughter is also disabled with a child and they, they wish to build a, a, a house of approximately 1,800 square feet and that can be adequately serviced by the existing water well and the ability for the septic system. Uh, they are more than a, uh, my understanding is they're more than an eighth of a, a mile away from the city water supply. So it'd be quite costly for them to connect. And that's the reason they're, they're seeking that variance. Thank you, Mr. Winblad, I appreciate that. I'll just note for the purposes of the record that our staff report indicates that the issue is that the property is within a quarter mile of the city's water system. Uh, which essentially requires them to drag the connection with the idea that it makes it uh, available for future connection. We're also told in our staff report, though, in this case, that due to the location of the site, not extending water service would not affect adjacent property development potential as surrounding properties are already developed and served by water wells uh, as well. So with that, I'll turn it over to Commissioner Pennington for any questions or concerns on this item since this is his board. Commissioner Pennington. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, no questions, no comments, just full support. I'm not aware of anyone who'd signed up to speak on this. I will pause a moment and just request that, that if you do want to be heard uh, on this item today, which is V23, uh, this is the time to do it. Alt-Y on your computer, star nine on your phone will raise your hand. Uh, and I do not see any hands raised. So if there's no further discussion from commissioners, I'll take a motion on this item from you, Commissioner Pennington. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of uh, item five. I have a motion. I'll take the second on PrimeGov. Motion's been seconded by Commissioner LaForge. Please cast your votes when available. Commissioner Powers, how will you vote? Aye. And Commissioner Hinkle, how will you vote? 
Yes, please. Thank you. Staff, all those should be cast. And that application is approved unanimously. Thank you very much, Mr. Windblad. Appreciate it. Uh, quick question. Uh, do they need to apply separately for a building permit at this point? That's a staff related question. I would assume the answer to that question is yes, if they're going to build something. Um, you okay. can call staff and get direction on what the next steps would be for your client. And that number is 297-2623. I was going to say, I might be seeing uh, Mr. Winblad at the Board of Adjustment. <laughs> Maybe so. Good luck, though. Thank you for being with us today. Next item on the agenda is item number six. Six is case number C-7285, a prelim preliminary plat of Legends Industrial Park, located north of Northwest 122nd Street and east of Northwestern Avenue. Thank you very much. Is the applicant with us today? Uh, yes. Start by giving us your name and address for the record, sir. Uh, Steve Landis, uh, 903 East 35th Street, Shawnee, Oklahoma. Is that what was needed? That's perfect. Thank you, Mr. Landis. Tell us what, what uh, you, need, we, you need us to know about your application, if anything. It's pretty straightforward given what it is, but is there anything you want to add to staff's introduction to your item? Well, th this is an industrial park that was being developed. Uh, it was originally part of Legends Industrial Park. To the north, there is a DBATS facility. Uh, this was originally school land commission parcel that was traded and adjusted to pick up this park. Legends Boulevard, of course, is a public street as stated in the uh, staff report. And we're basically expanding this area into a small to mid-sized industrial park uh, for the client. Excellent. Uh, just a couple things from the staff report. First of all, Mr. Landis, could you just confirm lots 13 through 17, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 there that a front 122nd is a reminder to uh, our commissioners. I believe that was the portion of this that was zoned I-1. Is that correct? That is correct. I do believe uh, recently the zoning was adjusted out. Okay. It was, has been adjusted. Yep. Excellent. Okay. And I'll also just note the design of this preliminary plaque conforms with the subdivision regulations as they relate to access requirements for non-residential subdivisions with between 31 and 100 lots. And the development also conforms to the I-2 and I-1 zoning district, re district requirements. So with that, uh, Commissioner uh, um, Pennington, this is your word, sir. So I'll turn it over to you once again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a quick question to the applicant. Um, did you read the technical evaluations are, and are you in full agreement? With them? Uh, yes, we're fine with all of those and we're in full agreement. Then I am in full support, Mr. Chairman. No question. I'll verify just um, for the folks that are with us today. If there's anybody that wants to be heard on this item, this is your chance. Again, Alt-Y on your computer or star nine on your phone. I don't see any hands raised. So unless there's other discussion on this item from commissioners, I'll take a motion from you, Commissioner Pennington. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of item six. I have a motion. I'll take the second on PrimeGov when it's available. We're buffering. There we go. That motion was seconded by Commissioner Privet. Please cast your votes when available. And Commissioner Powers, how will you vote, ma'am? Um, I will um, vote aye. Okay. Commissioner Hinkle, how will you vote, sir? Yes, please. Excellent. All votes should be cast, staff. Huh? And that application is approved unanimously. Next item on the agenda is item number seven. This is the companion item of the final plat of the same thing we just heard. Is that correct, Mr. Butler? That's correct. The final plat of Legends Industrial Park located north of Northwest 122nd Street and east of Northwestern Avenue. Okay, Mr. Landis, I'll take a stretch here and say you don't have anything to add. Since we just discussed this, Commissioner Pennington, and there was no one that uh, objected to it. Uh, if you're ready, sir, we'll take a motion on item seven. Before, let me just go ahead and make sure that with the formality, did the applicant approve of all the technical evaluations? Uh, yes, we are. And the only thing I might add is that we kind of apologize for actually bringing in both the preliminary and the final at the same time. Normally like to apply that way with the intent of deferring it on the end. But while there really were not any issues with the uh, staff report at this point, we would request that just go ahead and be approved combined if that's possible. That uh, being more of an industrial instead of residential, I felt it was a little more appropriate. Staff didn't have any objections, and again, just for the record, even though I noted this in the preliminary plat, it conforms 
uh, with the preliminary plat and the underlying zoning. So there's no issue with the subdivision regulations. And with that, I think we're ready for a motion on that item. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of item seven. Thank you very much, Commissioner Pinkton. I'll take a second on PrimeGov. And that's, that motion has been seconded by Commissioner Highsmith. So please cast your votes when available. Commissioner Powers, how do you vote? I was able to vote online, so I voted yay. Outstanding. Commissioner Hinkle, how do you vote, sir? Yes, please. Still the lone man out. That's all right. Sometime between now and 2022, you'll figure out how to log into PrimeGo. Well, if I ever get back over there. Yeah, we need an IT call for it. That <laughs> application was approved unanimously. Thank you, ladies. Next item on the, you bet. Good luck, Mr. Landis. Next item on today's agenda is item number eight. Mr. Butler? Uh, that's case number SPUD 1292, an application to rezone 112 Southwest 134th Street from PUD 1771 to SPUD 1292. Is the applicant present? Yes, sir. Mark Zitzel uh, with Johnson & Associates, 1 East Sheridan Avenue. Uh, Mr. Zitzel, this application has been uh, continued a number of times. Uh, where do we stand now? Well, uh, we are ready to have it heard. Uh, we were working through some uh, delays on the, the purchase agreement between the, the buyers and the sellers. Uh, ultimately, what, what we're proposing is a, uh, is a spud. You uh, probably recognize this property. Uh, it's been it was rezoned previously uh, last year uh, into a PUD. The only change that we're seeking is to add the car wash use unit uh, into the PUD for uh, who will become the, the new owner after they close. Um, we are uh, in agreement with TE number two. Uh, we can provide a percentage for TE one. Typically uh, C3 does not have an open space requirement. Um, so if it's the desire of the commission, we can certainly provide one. In the original PUD, we had agreed to 20%, uh, but that portion of the PUD had a large pond on it and some other things that uh, created the open space. So I, I would leave it to you if, if you felt a percentage on the open space was required for this. Um, Mr. Just to confirm though, PUD 1771 maintains that 20% requirement, staff's concern would probably be that we're reducing the overall size of what was originally the 1771 and therefore we're, we are proportionately reducing the open space as well if we don't have an open space requirement here. So I understand why they made the note in the report. Is there a percentage of open space uh, that you could commit to within this portion of the SPUD that we could consider in our discussion for TE number one as an addendum to that? Understood, yes. So if we were to agree to, uh, I think 4% open space on this site, uh, and we were permitted to do an administrative amendment on the other property to reduce that open space to 16%, that would allow the original intent of the 20% open space to be maintained for the total uh, development. Yeah, and obviously we can't make any changes to PUD 1771 today because that's not before us, but I'm assuming that you could make that application to staff for an administrative amendment, and if it would qualify for such an action, they'd either take it or not take it. But I just wanted to know if we had a commitment that we could make here to, again, specify that so we're not just losing that open space requirement in its entirety, right? So if, if that's the, the percentage you want to ask for, then we'll discuss that. Yes, sir. Perfect. Um, I will just note, too, in this report before I turn this over to Commissioner Hinkle, that our staff report does, in fact, indicate that the SPUD mirrors the existing 1771, with the only changes being the addition to the use unit 8300.14, and I believe also a change with the EMV signage. Uh, with that, Commissioner Hinkle, I'll turn it over to you. This is your award, sir. Give Commissioner Pennington a break. Um, I'm... Mr. Zitzow and I have discussed this multiple times since he kept continuing it. So um, as long as they're okay with the 4% open space and the, the T number two about the separation, I don't have any concerns about this. Next to a Walmart mini grocery and across the street from a um, storage facility. So good use for that area right there. All right. Well, let's see if anybody in the public disagrees with you, uh, Commissioner Hinkle. 
um, Alt Y on your computer or Star Nine on your phone to raise your hand. And I do not um, see anyone, so I'll ask if there's other uh, concerns from commissioners or questions on this item. Yeah, this is uh, Commissioner Highsmith. My, my question comes down to the math on that. Um, by reducing it to 4%, I mean, I, actually, I'm going to back up. Ig ignoring the math that we heard earlier, wouldn't an equal amount of math still be 20% on both? So technically, yes. we're reducing for the overall, for everything, we're reducing the open space requirement. Yes, we would be reducing the open space requirement by allowing 4% here and 16% on the other. Shouldn't we at least keep 20% on the original and then say on this one, it could be less if we, if we feel that's appropriate? So I'm not sure why we would reduce it on the original. I, I'm not sure. Well, we can't today because we're not, right. we're not considering 1771. Um, if the staff wouldn't agree to administratively amend that, they would have to come back to us to adjust that open space requirement. And to be frank with you, if, if City, I hate to do this to you, but if you could pull back up the, the um, exhibit that showed the, the proposed development. I just want to make a comment on something here. You can see that the the there's a little pond there that separates the residential developed area from the PUD 1771. And clearly that's the area that they intended to be open space. We also required a setback on that, uh, the office that came through, which is notated in our staff report for the specific plan. There's a buffer there that allowed for some open space. So they, they couldn't build there and that pond, they can't really adjust. So I'm not particularly bothered by the open space change on this portion of the lot. I just agreed with staff that some portion of it should, should at least be stipulated so that there's, there's something in, in the SPUD that dictates an open space requirement percentage. But I wasn't going to argue with them on the math because I don't know that it matters much. They can't build on the pond. That's going to be open space. Um, so that's what right. they're looking at just to determine whether or not you have an issue with it, Commissioner Highsmith. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we didn't think splitting it to 16 and 4% somehow equaled 20% to the whole. <laughs> um, yeah. That's not the right math, I don't think. So no, it's not. If, if we're fine with 16 and 4, whatever, but um, I just wanted to make sure we were thinking about this right. Yep. I, I hope that car wash generates some good ad valorem tax for the more schools down there, and I hope that it generates some great sales tax for the city. So if they're going to do that and, and they're going to commit to that remaining open space. But, Mr. Zitzow, please don't come back and ask to get rid of the pond, okay? We will not do that. All right. Not if, there's no more if there's no more discussion, Commissioner Hinkle, I think we're ready for a motion on this. And please just remember to make your amendment to TE1. Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. I do, I do have a question. Okay. With respect, with respect to the EMD signage, um, is, it, is it going to be positioned in such a way that it will be blocked from view of the existing residential by buildings or whatever? I don't necessarily have a problem with the EMD one, but I, I wouldn't want it to be placed in such a way that it would be... Um, uh, you know, uh, encroaching or, or uh, spilling over to the residential area there to the south. Commissioner Powers, I would, I would just note for clarity that the sign that they've requested in the freestanding accessory signage is only eight feet tall. Um, so it's pretty short. Um, and so with the, with that height and then the distance from the residential, that's, I wasn't particular. I mean, I wasn't particularly concerned about that, but it's, it's a question worth asking. Um, do we know where it's going to sit? I guess that's my question. Yep. Mr. Zidzow, could you direct an answer there to Commissioner Powers' question specifically, please? Yes, sir. Uh, so we're only requesting an EMD level one sign. And as you mentioned, uh, it is only requested at eight feet tall. And so the signage will be placed up along 134th Street. Uh, so it, it's placed a significant distance uh, from the neighborhood. And then there's an additional office building that is planned on the, uh, the southern portion of the site. So uh, there is likely to be uh, significant distance and buildings between the residential and the signage off of 134th. Well, that was a little bit of a squishy answer, but I guess I would just respond by saying, 
you know, I, when, when you're ready to place the sign, I hope you find a way to do it so that it will impact the neighbors to the least, the absolute least that it is. I can make a suggestion here. Um, they make light deflecting louvers that <laughs> make sure that it doesn't go south and only goes north. So, and that's not even an additional cost on the END signage. It's just an option. So, um, Mr. Zidzow, any objection to that? No, and I guess I should have clarified my apologies. Given the position of the street being east west, likely what you're going to see is a sign that has its face going east and west. So the light nice. is going to be, you know, directing back toward the neighbor. And I realize you're going to build more buildings in there, but that sixth or seventh house to the west at night would catch EMD light unless that light was deflected. And it wouldn't be something that would blare and keep them awake at night, but they will definitely see illumination in their backyard from that sign changing color until that building's built. We, we can agree to uh, the condition that you stated. Like I said, it's not even an extra charge on the EMD sign. You just tell them you want light deflecting louvers on it instead of the regular louvers and shouldn't be a big deal. Thank Commissioner Hinkle, you, you Commissioner Hinkle. Sure have that as a TE3 uh, in addition to the amended TE1 if you intend to make a motion. Is there any more discussion from commissioners on this one? Okay, hearing none, I still don't see any hands raised. So I think we're ready for that motion, Commissioner Hinkle. I'm going to move approval on SPUD 1292. Hang on, let me get back to my notes. Modifying T1 to 4% of green space, T2 stays in place, and T3 adds the wording to add light deflecting louvers for the level one EMD sign. That sounds like a good motion, and it's been seconded on Prime Gov by Commissioner Powers. So I have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes when available. And Commissioner Hinkle, how will you vote on this item? Yes, please. I believe all votes have been cast, staff. Scott, I'm going to step away for one minute now that the votes are cast. You bet. Sorry, Commissioner LaForge. Gotcha. And that application is approved unanimously. Next item on the agenda is item number nine. Nine is case number PC10720, an application to rezone 10501 East I-40 Highway from R1 to RA single family. Good afternoon, Kendall Dillon with Crafton Toll, representing the applicant. I also have Stuart Vandewilly, uh, who also represents the applicant with me on the call as well today. Um, if you all remember, this application was before you a couple of weeks ago. Um, there was three or four folks that showed up to speak, and because of that, we ended up deferring it a couple of weeks to allow for some discussion with the neighbors. Um, Stuart kind of led the charge on that, so if you've got any particular questions or want to hear about those discussions, he's available to discuss that. But just as a quick refresher on the site itself, um, it's 26 acres, lies about a quarter of a mile back to the west of Westminster. The current zoning is R1 single family. Um, it is adjoined on the north, east, and west by existing R1 zoning as well, obviously on the south by I-40. Um, this application today is to rezone it from R1 to RA, so it is a down zoning. Um, so staff recommended approval. It's consistent with the comp plan. It's consistent with the area. You'll notice in your staff report that there's an RA addition just about 500 feet north on the uh, west side of Noma that just recently went in. So again, it's consistent, compatible with the area, and we're available to answer any questions you have and ask for your approval. Thank you, Mr. Dillon. We appreciate you being with us. I'll just note for the purpose of the record, because uh, this did not go to all commissioners, uh, Commissioner Privet and I are in receipt of an email in advance of the meeting, just updating uh, the commission on uh, the nature of the correspondence from the folks that appeared at the last meeting and providing the issues that were raised and the attempted contact for each one of those folks. So should that discussion take place, we have a bit of information there that we provided in advance. With that, Commissioner Privet, this is your award, sir. So I'll turn this over to you to lead our discussion. Yeah. Is there anybody signed up? Uh, I'm sure there will be. Uh, right now, I just have, um, um, and forgive me, uh, Stuart, but Mr. Vanderweel, I can't remember if that's how you pronounce his last name, but 
He's raising his hand, but of course he's for the applicant. I don't have any additional hands raised. At this time, I'm happy to ask if there's anybody that wanted to be heard from the public today on PC 10720, please raise your hand at this time. Alt-Y on your computer or star nine on your phone. And I will pause a moment on this one, just given the nature of the amount of protest at the last hearing. And I do have uh, someone who's raised their hand, it looks like, uh, or they just put it back down. Uh, Delana Jordan, if you wanted to be heard, ma'am, uh, we're happy to have you speak to us. So you can push uh, star six on your phone or, or uh, the space bar on your computer at this time. All right, Ms. Jordan, I'll try it this way. I'll just unmute you. I'll ask. <laughs> Ms. Jordan, we are, I've, I've sent your request to unmute. You can just acknowledge that and it'll give you the ability to speak or it's space bar on your computer. Looks like you're joining us by computer. In the rare chance, although I can see your name, that you're with us by phone, you can push star six. I know, I'm pretty sure that her uh, protest was regarding the uh, timeline of the construction, which we have no say over, but. Right. Well, I'm being extraordinarily patient because of the nature of this meeting and the way it's being conducted. I want to make sure. Yeah. Yeah, you know, sure. we're giving her every chance here. I'll try it one more time. And then what I'll do uh, is I'll at least review the comment we received. So commissioners are aware of that. Uh, Ms. Jordan, just one more try. It's alt Y. Well, you've got your hand raised. It's, it's either star six or it's space bar. One of those two will unmute you. And I'll, again, I'll send you a request to unmute. If you're having technical difficulties, you can call 297-2623 for additional support. And real quickly, while we pause, I received, uh, as I mentioned, an email um, from uh, Stuart Vandewiel, which indicated an intent to contact uh, Mr. and Mrs. Jordan. Um, Mr. Vandewiel, if you can hear us, do you want to relay to the commission your comments there? Sure. Can you hear me, Mr. Chairman? I can hear you fine. Okay. Yeah, this is Stuart Vandewilly, uh, 320 South Boston, Suite 200 in Tulsa, 7413. Uh, um, and I can kind of summarize that, those communications with each of those or uh, specifically with the Jordans, uh, however you want me to proceed. Yeah, let's just do the Jordans for now and we'll see sure. if. Uh, so I reached out to the Jordans uh, either the, the afternoon of the last meeting or the day after just to get a, a good time to visit with them. Um, ultimately, we spoke for about 20 minutes um, on uh, Monday morning this week. Um, uh, from, from my vantage point, a, a good conversation. Obviously, their, their concern uh, is... The, the, the timetable going forward based on their viewpoint of the timetable um, looking backwards, I think is a, is a fair assessment uh, of, of where that is. Um, so in that conversation, um, the substance of what I told them was that uh, presuming that these applications are approved and move forward, that our, our next step from a uh, permitting standpoint uh, would be a grading plan uh, through the permit office that would uh, have final um, elevations of lots, roads, detention area, uh, et cetera, um, and also include things such as dust mitigation, uh, revegetation when uh, everything was done. Uh, um, and that if it was um, in, in their interest that we would endeavor to start and finish uh, in the areas nearest them sooner rather than later, um, to the extent that that helped, um, or if they wanted us to 
start and finish in their areas. Last, we would do that too, but my intention would be to, to have us start and finish nearest them uh, so as to you know, be as far from their property line as we can as soon as possible. Okay, and I'll just note too, for the purpose of the record that we have a letter in our packets. It was also in our last, uh, last meeting agenda packet, which is dated March 19th, 2021, which articulates the concerns uh, that Mr. and Mrs. Jordan had in relation to the application. And hopefully commissioners saw that in the previous packet and then in our packet for today. Uh, I don't have anybody else that's raised a hand Commissioner Privet, so um, I think we'll, we'll we'll go ahead and move forward here. Do you have questions for the applicant or any other concerns you want to discuss on this? Uh, yeah, for Kendall, uh, some of the changes, um, do we, are those going to be implemented in the new MBS? Has it been updated? Like the fencing agreed to for uh, Mr. and Mrs. Reed? Hey. Yeah, th this, this is a straight zoning case, so there's no master development plan or master development. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'll be the next one. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I, I assume, like saying, this might be a question for Stuart, but that may be a condition that can go with the preliminary plat. But I do know um, Stuart's got a little bit of knowledge of working with our client in particular with the, uh, the folks that were concerned there immediately to the north of the panhandle in relation. And so he, he knows what was agreed to between the parties. Okay. I misspoke. They will be in the yeah. end, I guess what I should say. Thank you very much for that confirmation. I think Ms. Jordan, can you hear us now? Can you hear us? Uh, we sure can. Excellent. Okay. We had to use our phone. That's okay. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry for the trouble. What would you like us to know, ma'am, or do you want to comment further? Uh, well, we just spoke with the um, attorney on Monday. on Monday, and he said that they would be doing the work. Grading. The grading, and then that they would work towards our property and the property next to us first, and that. Um... Okay, also, yeah, this is uh, Mike Jordan. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Mr. Jordan. Would you do us a favor? I don't think, would you give us your address real quick? Uh, it's 3925 South Randy, R-A-N-D-I-E. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we were concerned about like replacement of the of the dirt that was taken out. And uh, I was led to believe that none of that dirt would be replaced. So basically that whole area that's going to be uh, built you know, for houses and everything in that area, I guess it's going to be sort of a sunken type neighborhood. If And we were just wondering... Um, how that would have you know, like affect like, you know, rain is coming in and everything, would there be flooding? Uh, well, Mr. Gerber, one thing I can tell you is that when we get to that portion, it sounds like as Mr. Dillon articulated, they'll be coming back through with a preliminary plat and then a final plat. You will right. receive notice on those actions as well. At that point in their, in their development process, if you will, this is just the rezoning, but they'll be required to, con to confirm through that, that plat application that they're in conformance with subdivision regulations. And at that time, city staff will review the plat to ensure that that's the case. And it's at the final plat stage that staff will review things like drainage issues and other options, other uh, items that may be of concern from the, from the development standpoint. So um, at this point, that's not really something that's in front of us, but, okay. um, but, but your, your concerns will certainly be reviewed by city staff at the appropriate time is what the point I wanted to make to you. And Mr. Chairman, the, just to note, the preliminary plat will be heard next on this. Yeah, and that's why I was trying to make the distinction that the final plat right. is when they review the drainage portion and all that, since he made a drainage-related comment. So. Yeah, they're, they're not going to let him have a, a bowl in the center of it. I mean, <laughs> he'll take care of it. <laughs> does that help okay. you, Mr. Jordan? Yes, that does. I'm sorry I didn't yeah, address the right thing at the right time. No, 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 that's okay. We're, 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 I want to make sure we get you the information we need and you understand the process. So right. what, what I'll just and add also, to your to your comments there is just so you know, um, I hope you shook hands with the man and that was good enough for you because we can't really, there's no way for us to dictate in a zoning application what they do, where they do it first. Um, right. It's impossible for us. So they're just making a good faith, um, you know, essentially commitment to you to take that action. We can't require that in any way. Right. Right. I'm, I'm not an engineer in any way. I just wanted to 
I know there's a lot of dirt taken out. So I was wondering how that, that area would look with the, the copious amount of dirt that he took out. Yeah. Uh, and the few trees that are actually left there now to, to are, we hope that, that they stay there. That was another thing is that no more trees right behind our properties or the Joneses or the Jameses be taken out. Yeah. I would note uh, to Ms. Jordan's comment, Mr. Dillon, that uh, our staff report indicates that plan conformance would be strengthened if the remaining upland forest was preserved. I don't know if you're prepared to make a commitment in that regard, but that would address Mrs. Jordan's concern she's articulating now. Do you um, get yeah, and, and Stuart, I don't know if you've got any thoughts on that, but I think, um, you know, unfortunately, a, a lot of the trees or most of the trees are gone. Um, you know, this is an acreage style development. Um, so I think, you know, the nature of those will cut in the paths, the streets. So I think depending, I don't know exactly the trees that we're referring to behind the Jordans, um, but I think we certainly would consider looking at those along that perimeter and boundary line. When you say look at it, are you willing to commit to that? I, I think, Stuart, and you can help me here, but I think some distance of 20 foot buffer or something along that property line probably I think is something we could agree to. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? I can, sir. Um, and so, and I, I don't know if that's, and that we're kind of blending the rezoning and the, and the preliminary plot, which is fine, but from, from a, a screening and, and fencing um, standpoint, um, our, our thought was that that may be more appropriate in the final plot, but yeah. What, no, what yeah, yeah. Uh, I hate to disagree with you there, Mr. Vanderwill, but we'd need that commitment now. Sure. And so what I, from a, from that tree issue that we're just talking about uh, from a, and we try to verbally describe what I think we're talking about along the North South property lines. Um, so, I mean, we can't, we can't leave it on the Noma roadside, but along the North South uh, property lines um, on the Eastern and Western side, um, we are prepared to leave a, 20 foot buffer in which we uh, leave mature trees. Uh, and I would say mature trees, and I'm certainly defer to, to your um, expertise and discretion here, but I would, I would want to define that uh, either as a, a caliper size or a, a you know, circumference size of uh, you know, somewhere in the 10 inch caliper range. Uh, well, so, no. we're, we're, we're getting into the, the, the a technical issue with trying to define something that city city staff's not going to take a you know a, a fabric ruler and go out and measure the circumference of the tree. Well, and but what I also don't want to um, I, what I don't want to paint somebody into a corner with is uh, some you know one inch sucker that we can't cut out uh, or a five inch dead tree that we can't remove. So that there needs to be some some level of technical clarity around it. Um, all right, all right. Well, let, me, let, me, let me give it a try for the sake of time. Um, Cause I don't wanna sit here and litigate this all day. Yep. We got the Northern boundary, the Eastern boundary and the Southern boundary. Those are the boundaries by which you're committing to do tree preservation, correct? So if the picture that you're looking at uh, on the screen and what I, what I was talking about was the North South. Uh, so your, your full Eastern boundary. Okay, so the full uh, Eastern boundary of the subject property. Yep. Okay. And then the north-south piece of the western boundary. The north-south piece of the western boundary. Yeah. Oh, Whoever, the, whoever's running the cursor is right yeah. where I'm talking about. Okay. So could you commit to 80% uh, of the tree preservation along those areas? Within, uh, say, with, within say, 50 feet or 20? I mean, give us a within, number. With, within a 20-foot um, line of that property line. Um, 80 percent um sure okay uh mr or mrs jordan does yeah. that assuage yeah your let concerns? me clarify that so uh within that 20 foot area they can definitely say there'll be at least 80 percent of the trees that are there now is that what i'm hearing that's what we're going to ask them to commit to is a technical evaluation of the rezoning okay. application okay yeah that that area um was a you know, it, it blocked out all the, the machinery and all the dirt and noise and everything. And uh, we'd like uh, for that to stay. Okay. Are there any other concerns from you guys today? Just that I said that there's a two or three year um, timeline 
for the land development behind our house. Yeah, and Mr. Jordan, we can't dictate that, unfortunately. Oh, Mr. Oh, okay. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, from a technical question, and I don't know that I care, but uh, that TE, is that is that better part of the rezoning or the, the plat? It needs and to be a part of the rezoning so okay. that okay. can be enforceable later. That's fine. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, this is Commissioner Pennington. This is a straight zoning application. I don't think we can add a TE, can we? That was my question. Um, uh, seems like it would be a goal on the plat. I'd have to defer to staff, I guess. Yeah, we'd have, we could ask for this in the plat, but I don't think we could ask for this now. Well, let's just confirm we can get what we're after here and we don't need them to redo their application, frankly. So it, so either Mr. Butler or I don't know who's with us from legal, but what would we need to do to ensure that this is memorialized into their obligations as a part of the rezoning? And just before, while they're thinking that, my thought would be that would be a, a better um, uh, item for inclusion on, on the plat just as a, and I'll call it a green space, but... Um, Scott, if it mattered, I was I was writing my notes on this on the uh, for the next application on ten, just you know, kind of taking it all down and then was going to wait and put it on that. One. Okay, as long as we're as long as we're good, I just want to make sure that as a part of just the preliminary plat that we can do this because if I mean, with all due respect to the applicant, we heard last week what a, a bad set of circumstances this has been. So I'm pretty focused on making sure that. We got more than a handshake here for the tree preservation, that's all. And if that would require them to come back with a PUD to get it done correctly, then so be it. If we can do it as a part of the preliminary plat and that be it, then that's great too, I think. But, uh, but I just want a confirmation. So if someone from staff could you know, direct us here, that would be wonderful. I'm looking for some direction. Yeah, this JJ, if you could make it a TE on the preliminary plat, uh, then it will come back as a requirement on the final plat. Excellent. A plat note. Mr. and Mrs. Jordan, I'm doing the best I can for you. Are you in okay? Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate that. Yeah, if that could carry over to when the discussion is as far as the plaque goes, that would be great. Yeah, memorialize it and, and reintroduce it, and make sure it uh, is incorporated into that. We appreciate it. Now, appreciate not, super, not super wild about it not being a part of a zoning deal. This is probably a good example that, of having something come as a PUD so we can really, you know button this down legally, but uh, we're getting commitments here. So uh, just so the applicant's clear, we'll be looking for that too on the final plat somehow. Um, any other questions or concerns on this from commissioners? If not, Commissioner Privet, I'll turn it over to you if you feel like you're ready to discuss it or make a motion. I am, um, I'm ready to approve uh, case number PC10720. Uh, that reads the meets the rural subdivision standards and uh, that's it. Perfect. I have a, a motion to recommend approval to city council on PC10720. I'll wait for a second on prime gov. And that motion was seconded by Commissioner LaForge. So please cast your votes when available. Commissioner Hinkle, how do you vote, sir? Yes, please. Staff, all votes should have been cast. Commissioner Powers, oh, gotcha. And that recommendation for approval of the city council passes unanimously. Thank you all very much, uh, Mr. Dillon, and thank you to Mr. and Mrs. Jordan for joining us today. Appreciate your patience on uh, letting you get your comments in. Thank you. Thank you very much also. Um, next item on the agenda is item number 10, which is the companion item here. Um, Mr. Yes. Dillon, you want to give us your introduction on this? This is uh, C-7279, the companion item, preliminary plot of Williams Acres. Again, for the record, Kendall Dillon with Craft and Toll, 300 Point Parkway Boulevard. Um, again, Stuart Van Willie with uh, Hall Estel is with me as well. Um, obviously, we've had quite a bit of discussion. There are four TEs to which we're in agreement with. TE number three relates to uh, the street stub to the north um, and we're in agreement with that so we're not asking for a variance so we'll just grant the right of way to the north property line i know um, there was a little bit of a question and discussion about the stub that comes from the east um, you know on the last meeting just kind of a refresher on that it's a private street um, and then our property line actually would go to the center line of that private street anyway so there's no potential of making that connection so it conforms to the subregs, and we'll agree to make the stub to the north. 
So we're in agreement with the other TEs, and then obviously we can add the TE regarding the trees and the buffer that's been previously discussed, and we'd ask for your approval. Yeah, and just to confirm from staff, so is there anything we need to notate in the record to address the two boundaries where this tree preservation is being required, or are we comfortable that for the purposes of uh, preserving the record, we have uh, specifically identified these areas of tree preservation? Yes, I, I think we're fine. When, when it comes back, it will either be a plat note or even a, maybe even a pre tree preservation easement on the, uh, on the plat. Okay. All right. Uh, Commissioner Privet, I, I don't have anybody that separately signed up to speak. I guess I'll just ask uh, as out of an abundance of caution and respect for Mr. and Mrs. Jordan, uh, if they have any specific comments relating to the plat that are different than the concerns that they address with us on the zoning. No, I don't. Okay. No. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Jordan for confirming that. Um, and so Commissioner Privet, I'll turn this over to you for any discussion or questions you have on the plat, sir. Okay. Uh, just in case anybody was confused, there's an extra map in here in the staff report that's not relevant. But yep. <clears throat> um, other than that, uh, I'll move to approve uh, C seven. Not no, I just said I'm looking at C seven two seven nine. Um, subject to all four TEs and adding a fifth TE of a 20 foot buffer along the full east line and the north south of the west property line. Uh, of a commitment for 80% tree preservation 80 tree along those boundaries. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I have a motion that I'm comfortable with. Uh, staff, any final discomfort on the, that additional TE language? No, that's fine. Okay, great. I'll take a second on the motion and prime the other. And that motion has been seconded by Commissioner LaForge. Please cast your votes when available. Commissioner Hinkle, how do you vote? Yes, please. All votes should be cast, F. Nope. And that preliminary plat for C-7279 has been approved unanimously. Good luck on the project, uh, Mr. Dillon, to your, to your client, and thank you to the Jordans for being with us today. Thank Next you. item on the agenda is item number 11, uh, SPD 1304, Mr. Butler. This is an application to rezone 2728 Southwest 2nd Street from R2 to SPUD 1304. Yeah, good afternoon, David Box, 522 Colcord Drive on behalf of the applicant. Uh, this is an SPD, SPUD application that would allow for a uh, roofing company to be located here. Um, the site is zoned R2. Cindy, if you could display the, uh, the aerial that you have with this. There you go. So it's R2. Um, if you've been in the area or familiar with the area or look at this aerial here, um, I would submit to you that the days of, of which this would be um, redeveloped in a residential manner are long gone. You have an outdoor storage for what, what appears to be um, scrap cars to our west. The area feels very industrial. If you've been over there, it is just uh, very unlikely that this ever gets redeveloped as R2. So what this bug would allow is a limited amount of industrial uses, which we believe to be uh, consistent, compatible with the area. Um, there are a, a couple of TEs that I want to address briefly. TE1 uh, talks about that the proposed parking layout requires vehicles to back into the street. So a variance to allow maneuvering in the right of way will be required. Um, so we, we would ask to amend the spud uh, to allow that. Um, two on the building setback, staff asked for 60 feet from um, the center line of Southwest 2nd Street. It's a very tight site. Um, we're not on a main arterial where I think there's a lot of concern about uh, what would be located here. So we'd ask for 40 feet from the center line of 2nd Street. Uh, and we do agree with TE3. Uh, in speaking with uh, Commissioner Clare, he did ask that we have a five foot um, green strip along the east, south, and west, and we can agree to that uh, as well. So I would propose we add TE4 requiring a five foot green strip along the east, south, and west portions of the SPUD. Um, and I'll just note too, for the purpose of the record, the staff report reflects that there's R2 zoning surrounding the site. Uh, as you saw from the aerial that staff put up, uh, you can't tell from the current aerial, but all that is undeveloped R2. So. To Mr. Box's point, with the industrial nature of the surrounding area um, and, and then the highway, I, I think 
I think I'm, I'm going to have to agree with him that this is not really a residential area. Uh, on the maneuvering, the Southwest 2nd Street, so we, by amending, you're, you're asking us to delete TE1. Did I understand that correctly? No, I mean, I, I guess I'll defer to JJ. Really what I'd suggest is we amend TE1 to just allow the maneuvering uh, with parking maneuvering within the right of way. Okay, and JJ, that's that was kind of rhetorical. Is that can we can we do that here? Do we need to do that a different way? You do one of two ways. It can be done here, or if the commission's not comfortable, it could be done as, as an application to the board of adjustment. And of course, if we go to the board of adjustment, Mr. Privet and his colleagues are going to say, "Well, why are we burying a spud?" Um, I, I think the way to do it is through the the, the legislative process. Okay. Uh, well, and 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 I don't. I'll, I'll, well. I'll stop. This is Commissioner Highsmith's ward, so I'll turn it over to him and see what questions or comments or thought he has, and then I can come back and comment on the maneuvering in Southwest Second. Um, Commissioner um, before Heisman. before we before we break in, I'm sorry, I don't I don't mean to step in, but you know this this there are a couple of questions here. One of them has to do with this kind of form shopping thing about where is the appropriate place to make what kind of a decision. The other one really, and maybe it's just a subcategory of that really. You know, we don't really, as a planning commission, impose the same kind of necessity requirement for variances that's required by the Board of Adjustment. And I, I do think that is something that we ought to be giving some serious thought to. You know, I, I, we, we definitely don't want to get into, the, into a position of encouraging form shopping. And it seems to me like one of the things that might tend to do that is if we are more lenient in the criteria that we apply to variance requests than would be applied if it were if it were going to the board of adjustment. And that's, I mean, I just want to make that point and then the discussion can go on. That's really all I have to say. May I address that briefly? Uh, just before you before you do that, because I think we're going to talk about it at, at length, Mr. Box. Um, Commissioner Highsmith, this is your award, sir. Do you have comments you want to make on this? Uh, my only question was for staff, and it was in regards to the 60 foot um, from center line. I wanted to just understand what their thinking was and make sure if it didn't compete with mine, the, uh, that we could come to a conclusion on that one. Staff? I, I do not know where the 60 foot uh, or TE2 came from. It, um, I don't know if it was planning or traffic. Um, Mr. Bowler, okay. did that come from planning? So I, I'm not, I don't think that came from us, Sarah. Did that come from traffic? This was not from planning, but the reason for it is because an industrial street width is 60 feet. Okay, understood. That, that makes sense. That so, you, Commissioner? Okay. Well, I guess uh, I guess are we uh, are we then proposing that this street, um, I, I guess, as a typology, be redefined as a as a uh, industrial street? I mean, is that is that what we're thinking? Like, you know, that the future of this being industrial should like is, is this something we're applying to every future application? Um, that on Southwest Second between you know these two. Or South Streets. I, I just want to. I just want to understand. You know where our. You know what the long term is on that one item. Yeah, if an application comes in for rezoning um, to industrial and it's on a fifty foot wide local street, we will ask for additional easement to bring it up to sixty. So eventually, if all the zoning on the street is changed to industrial and it's serving an industrial purpose, it will have industrial right of way. Why is that road anyways? I think the right of way there is 60, but he was narrowing the, yeah. the building setback. Say because they're not we're not having to grant any right of way here. So all the, the right of way necessary is here. Yep. Um, we're not proposing to be within the right of way. The measurement of 60 feet from the center line still allows for all, all of the right of way. Uh, even at the 40 feet that we request, all the necessary right of way is still there. Now I'm not a planner like Mr. Zitzow, so my math may not be as great and sharp, as <laughs> this, 
but I still think that <laughs> they're right away. Um, for, well, for me, you know, this is this is actually fairly easy. I don't mean to um, step all over uh, traffic or anything, but I, I tend to believe that traffic overdesigns the roads, and so honestly, I'm I, I think on this item, I'm happy to uh, to allow for a forty foot. Um, assuming that my fellow commissioners don't have an issue with it, uh, a- as requested, I believe by by David earlier in this conversation. Yes, I um, it was forty feet rather than sixty. Your 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 building actually sets back twenty five feet from the from the property line, and then it's another fifteen feet to the center of the roadway, just to confirm, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So there there's the site plan for you, Commissioner Heisman. Yep, I think. Uh, uh, I think if we come to a conclusion on item one, then I, I don't have any other issues with this item. So, okay. Yeah. So this is Commissioner Clark, I, I do have a question. If, if that's the case, I mean, if you've got, and I looked at it, it's it, right now the existing pavement section is about 24 foot and it's a, it's a rural section. There's no curb or gutter or anything. It's in the roads actually in pretty poor shape, but it's about 24 feet in, in width. So that means there's only from, from the center line, there's only 12 feet of pavement. So if we've got 30 feet to the right of way line, that means that you've got what, 18, 18 feet of pavement between the existing road or 18 feet of area between the existing road and then what would be the right of way. So, and then if they put their parking basically on their property, you're gonna have additional paving, um, you know, between that. So I, that's one thing where I, I haven't, I, I would have a concern about just creating a, a, a substantial amount of paving and an area between the road and, and the street or between the road and the parking. Um, it's just, just paved area and it's gonna be no man's land. Well, I, I guess maybe, maybe you can help me understand this better, uh, Commissioner Claire, but I guess whenever I think it, if, if the city's asking us to be, you know, off a minimum of, of 60 feet, isn't, isn't the proposal that long-term there would be even more paving? No, it, no, that's correct. And I, and I'm not saying, it's, I'm, I'm saying even, even with 40 feet, it's a, it's a substantial, I I mean, if it's 40 feet from the center, I would almost say, I mean, just for discussions, um, I don't. I think the with that with that amount of right away, I think the, the setback for the building is extensive. Oh, so you want to be more aggressive? Uh, okay. Well, I, I I think I think at least for me in, in looking at the surrounding area, like generally, I'm I'm all for being more aggressive on on setbacks or or build two lines and the amount of paving. But it's hard for me, at least on this street, to ask the applicant to you know, build even closer to the road than any of his neighbors, I suppose. Um, and I think, you know, the, the city runs into issues there where we've done that in the past and you've got one, you know, one structure sticking out in front of all the others. And it seems a little odd as well. Yeah. So my, my biggest thing, and it's hard to picture on this exhibit because the road isn't drawn in, but if you look at the bottom of the page, you see the property line there, which is the right of way. So there's going to be pretty much another 20 feet of area between that line and the edge of the road. So there's going to be 20 feet, which, you know, is used for maneuvering and for those three spaces, but you're just going to have a really deep parking area right there with no, with no buffer. Uh, I see. Okay. I see the point you're getting that now. Yeah. That, um, that technically the the length of those parking spaces includes um, a drive from you know essentially curb cut on. Uh, well, yeah. What's not illustrated here then would be you know what occurs from the edge of their property line to the actual edge of ba- back of curb uh, or lack of curb here. But yeah, Correct. and because there's no curb, it's a rural section. Right. Then I mean, you could have parking. People just parking, you know, between yeah, that's the road and the drive. Totally fair point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah hey, uh, David, um, do you do you understand to kind of what we're getting at here? 
and the issue or the potential issue? Yes, except for, you know, that dashed line on our on our site plan, of course, is our property line. I mean, so we don't control anything outside of that. Yeah, I, I, th- I think typically, you know, we, we do this on, on projects as well, where if, if you're going to propose on street, essentially, it, which is, you know, what you're showing. Um, well, you know, I guess there's two potentials of what you're showing. Either we need to see a drive that connects to those parking spaces and allows for the maneuvering. So, you know, it would be part of the question that staff has, you know, uh, brought up. Or then I think you need to seek a revocable and approval from traffic in order to do actual true on-street parking, right? Isn't that this, – this proposes some, like, third middle option, which I agree with Commissioner Clare on is not ideal. I've seen this done elsewhere, and it doesn't end up being a good product. So – All the parking I think I, right. Yeah, I get that. But, but you, you're understanding, like, our, our point is what's between uh, the back of that parking and the back of curb. Yeah, he's, this he's, is, you, guys are, you guys are saying he's bas- they're basically, the applicant's basically kind of in-rounding, having to go to traffic commission for a revocable permit. So we have these parking spaces that are going to permanently be able to be used for maneuvering in the right-of-way because it's, it's not on-street parking, even though it is. Right. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a it's a it's a completely like it's a very valid point by Commissioner Clare, and I'm glad he brought it up because I think I misinterpreted the site plan, and that's on me. Me too. Um, but well, yes, I, I, I'm not sure I'm not sure that you could point me to an example of doing this elsewhere in the city that I would say is a is a good outcome. So, yeah, I, I I'm 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 not understanding what what, what the concern is. Um, Outside of that dashed line, of course, is right away. Presumably, at some point, it's, the street's going to have to be fixed, or maybe it gets widened. I don't know. And so the street gets brought up right, right to that. Um, based upon the limited nature of Southwest Second Street, it's not. It doesn't really connect anywhere. It dies at Main. It dies at Miller Place. It doesn't go through. All of the traffic well, along here is is local. Sure, but but David, the the street. In in my experience elsewhere in Oklahoma City, right, the, the, the edge of the street doesn't actually come to the edge of your property line. Your property line's beyond. Um, there's typically a sidewalk between you and the street, and a lot of times, you know, a, uh, some kind of sod grass area or other planting area. Do, no, do neither of those exist in this location? There are no sidewalks. Well, I guess I'm asking from the edge of your property to the actual edge of the street, is there not additional frontage there? Is there a better way to ask this question uh, or, 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 or pose the issue here? Maybe, Scott, could you help us? Uh, well, I, um, yeah, sure. I'll try. So, uh, Mr. Box, what I think what the real issue is that if, if this were being proposed as on-street parking, we could approve this. You'd still have to go to traffic commission and get an approval for a revocable permit to have that on-street parking. Because all of your parking is on the site and there's a, you're, you, you totally put it in, it's what the concern, I think, Commissioner Clare's articulating, he can connect me, correct me here on this point if it's not right, but you'll say you have a long truck pull in there and park in that parking space. They're, they're going to be blocking that, look, the, the back end of that truck's going to be barking that little street and there's no way for the city to come back later and revoke that on-street parking through that process. You're in-rounding that, and we're creating the, the permanent ability for you to have that by varying it within the PUD document. So the, so the idea would be that we would require you, we would want to alter that to, to require you to go to traffic commission and get the revocable so that if down the road, and just so we're clear, I think if you put the over under at a decade on anything changing at Southwest 2nd Street, I'll take the over on that bet. But I don't know what's going to happen in 15 years or whatever, and this is in perpetuity. So I think it is responsible for us to protect the street just so far as creating a zoning that would in-round a city process that could be corrected later through the revocation of an on-street parking permit. Commissioner Claire, did I articulate that fairly well? But, but we, the only thing that we're seeking would be maneuvering in the right-of-way. I know. We, I get that. Whatsoever. There's no scenario in which this layout would require anything from traffic commission as it relates to parking. So no revocable. This is just a variance to allow maneuvering right away. Well, but it, but, well, but right. But that's the problem is that we're granting the variant. We're, we're varying it within the PUD, which is which is a change what we're doing. 
you could shift the whole thing forward, which is what Commissioner Claire was explaining. If I followed him correctly, you could shift the whole thing forward, and that would then force the that to be connected to as to as being served as on street parking, which that's what would trigger the, the revocable permit and the visit yeah. the traffic commission. Again, I'll ask Commissioner Claire to clarify if I'm that's, saying that's correct. that's what I was yeah, that's what I was asking. Um yeah is if that could be shifted forward and, and that would actually give you more 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 uh developable area on site the other thing that i went and looked at is i believe that that right away in there is not 60 feet i it looks like it, it might be 45 or 50 um so it might not be as much area um between the basically what would be between the edge of road and, and the right away um as, as previously with some of those, those those dimensions previously discussed. So I guess that's just another thing is, is understanding, making sure that we have that information um, either in the exhibit or in the staff report of, of you know, the right of way distance of, of Southwest Second Street. Just, just to get us off high center here for just a second, uh, Mike Wilson with fire has his hand raised. I'd like to see if he has something that he wants to add to our discussion here. Well, uh, it's not as it relates to fire, but basically what you're approving though is they would have to pave that full 50 foot width from the property line out to the edge of the street. So that's what you would end up having is a full width, 50 foot, in essence, driveway, but I'm not sure how they would get the radiuses on the edges of the driveway. Uh, but if you put parking like that, then you're gonna have to pave that whole thing and that's a kind of a public works issue also. Well, I don't believe, yeah, you have it, drive, I don't think you can have a driveway wider than 36 feet. So. Right, and, and, and this is exactly the issue that I was trying to illustrate, uh, David, which is that, you know, if, if you drew a street in on your exhibit, um, where it is, you'd realize that, oh, I've got to, I've, we've got to create a drive from the back of these parking spaces to the street. The street does not occur at the rear edge of those parking spaces, correct? There's an additional, you know, sure. perhaps 15 feet there. And so now we're talking about a 15 foot length of drive that is as wide as all of those parking spaces, which essentially means, right? Like wh what kind of outcome have we created? It's not an outcome that you, I, surely you wouldn't think that I would, you know, um, support that. Uh, I, I just, you know, just will how I feel about curb cuts generally. I know it's Southwest Second. I agree with uh, all of uh, Commissioner Craven's comments. To me, I just need you guys to decide: are you doing are you doing on-site parking or are you doing on-street parking? And to me, there are two options for approaching that type of parking. One, you're pulling all the parking onto the site, and we've got a drive that is clearly illustrated that 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 brings traffic onto the site to park, or you're pushing it actually closer to the street, and you are seeking a revocable, and you're going to traffic. To me, those are the two valid options for approaching this. I can't support. Um, I can't support what you've drawn. Uh, you can blame Commissioner Claire for enlightening me, but <laughs> to me, that's that's in it. That it really is. That's a big issue for for myself. So yeah, and I, I don't know that. I mean, I don't. I can't. Obviously, we can't speak for Traffic Commission. I don't know what the concern would be here with on-street parking, this is more like an alley than a street. If you drop down and do like a street view on it, which I did while we were visiting, I mean, it's it's like a glorified alley. At any rate, I think I'm in agreement. I think that would be the, the right thing to do is to, you know, adjust it so that the site plan takes that parking and makes the revocable required. JJ, can we get a revocable administratively? I don't believe so. We'd have to go to traffic commission. Well, if you're going to put spaces in the right of way, that would go to traffic commission and a revocable. I have another hand raised. It looks like a, a city staff number. I don't see a name. So um, 2925, um, if you want to comment on this or add some color, you're welcome to do that. Okay, this is Richard McCubbin with traffic. There you um, go. Sorry, I've been in a uh, 
conference all day, been listening to this on the side. Uh, the, if you're parking in the right of way and it's not parallel, it has to go to traffic commission. When they move this outside the right of way, traffic commission does not look at it. However, when they put that in there in their drawing, it would be a very wide driveway. Maximum driveway width is 36 feet unless it's approved through the, any wider would have to be approved through the public works director. That's not a traffic commission. There is not a revocable permit to get for parking in the right of way. You go to traffic commission, they approve it, you put your parking in the right of way, even a little bit of it, you will then have to dedicate more right of way to include the sidewalk in front of it as well and the ADA parking spot. And those parking spots will not be designated for the owner of their property. Those are public parking spots. It does not matter if Second Street looks like an alley. It does not matter if it's in poor condition. That's what the code says. So if they keep the parking outside the right-of-way, then the only thing they need is a variance for maneuvering in the right-of-way. But the site plan that was provided did not show the roadway, and this is what brought up our first question on it, was how wide is this driveway going to be? Yep. This has been an extraordinarily long discussion over a driveway and parking. So, Mr. Box, what do you want to do, sir? Well, can I, can I be so bold, Mr. McCubbin, would this be something that your staff would at least view favorably? I don't want to agree to go to traffic commission and waste a bunch of time for my client to only be summarily rejected and back here uh, at planning commission. When you say, would we be favorable to the on-street parking? Yes. That I can't say how the commission would rule, but we would not uh, uh, go against it if it met the requirements. Yes, I'm not asking about the commission. I just mean from a staff level. St staff would not recommend against it if it met the requirements. Okay. So perhaps what we do then is just altogether delete uh, TE2. TE1, you mean? Well, I mean, TE2 and 1. Okay. Um, certainly TE2. Well, I think I still need the maneuvering within here. And then I will go to traffic commission for the ability to park in the right of way. It would make no, no sense to have to go here and then traffic commission and then seek a board of adjustment variance. No, I agree with that. I agree with that. Okay. We never circled back to that discussion, but given the, the fact that this is a part of a larger application and it's not a standalone request to maneuver in the right of way, I, I think we deal with this as a commission here. That's my opinion. I'm open to other commissioners thoughts on it, obviously, but that's my opinion. I think um, if traffic commission approves it, you don't, it's, it's a given that you have to maneuver. If it's on, if it's, if it's determined to be on street parking, you have to maneuver in the right of way and it's yeah. public parking. So Out of abundance of, of caution to avoid a fourth public hearing on, on a minor technicality, I would really prefer just to allow maneuvering within the right of way within the SPD document. Mr. Box, um, would it be preferable to post to continue this item until you've gone through that process and know where you stand? No, we, we'd prefer to, to move forward and we will simultaneously seek whatever we need to seek at uh, Traffic Commission. Well, I think we need a little bit of clarity from, from staff then in ensuring, um, I don't have anyone signed up to speak on this item and I don't have any hands raised. Um, if you wanna do that, star nine, uh, or alt Y on your computer and uh, while we discuss. But I think we need some clarity from staff as to what exactly we need to do to encapsulate what I'm hearing is the general consensus of the commission, which is that we want to ensure that the spots, the, the, the parking spots that are illustrated on the existing site plan submitted by the applicant are deemed to be on street parking and therefore requiring a revocable permit from the traffic commission in order to be installed. So I think we need to know from the, to, to, I think we need some assistance there with the technical evaluations as to how we phrase TE one and two to ensure that we're preserving that correctly if we're gonna send it on. I think um, you would need to just delete TE one. Okay. TE two, what he's asking to do is to move the whole site north 
into the right of way and uh, and reduce the building setback. Right. So he needs to come up with a building setback um, for TE2 that he can live with. It'll be less than what the requirement is, less than 25. But we have five in the spud. I mean, that, I, I, okay. Coming full circle, this is a, <laughs> what we intended to do. Staff was who requested 60 feet. So in our mind, I think we had all along intended to do exactly what we've now taken 25 minutes of our master's watching time uh, to discuss. Uh, in the spud, we had requested five feet as a front yard setback. That being, that being the case, uh, I would delete TEs one and two. Except I do want the ability to maneuver within the right of way in the spud. This is no different than what we do on every residential pud you see. Um, anywhere we have residential um, common areas, you have maneuvering within the right of way. Of course, everyone that lives in a traditional single family home maneuvers in the right of way uh, whenever they back out of their house. Okay, so Mr. Chambliss, if I'm understanding this correctly, we've got TE1 deleted, TE2 deleted, TE3 remains. We've added TE4, which would be a five foot landscape buffer on the east, south and west property lines. And then we're adding a TE5, which would allow the applicant to maneuver in the right of way. Correct. Mr. Box, are you comfortable with that? Yeah, and in terms of landscape buffer, I want to make sure we're clear. I did speak with Mr. Clare about this. What we intend to do is uh, five feet of grass. Okay, so it's a, just green space. How do how do I phrase that? A, a green buffer, a green space. Okay, uh, it looks like Mr. McCubbin would like to uh, kind of jump in here one more time. Uh, Mr. McCubbin, do you have comments on this? Yes, sir. Um, you do not need maneuvering in the right of way if the parking is in the right of way. You okay. don't need a variance for it because you are already in the right of way. Got it. Uh, fair enough, I just. Okay, yeah. so we won't need a TE5. We just need then, um, Commissioner Highsmith, uh, we, ju we just need TE3 and four and the deletion of TEs one and two. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't catch what TE4 was going to be. TE4 is a five foot green space buffer on the east, south and west boundary lines of the PUD. Don't let anyone ever are say we, we don't have conversations about parking. Are, are we making a motion here now? Or is I there think anything we're ready else for you are, sir. Okay. Well, I make a, a recommendation or a, I move to make recommendation for approval for item SPUD 1304, uh, eliminating TE1, eliminating TE2, um, accepting TE3, and adding TE4, which would include a five foot green belt on the uh, east, south, and west side. I have a motion uh, from Commissioner Highsmith, and I'll take a second on PrimeGov. I have that second from Commissioner Clare, so please cast your votes when available to recommend approval to City Council on SPUD 1304, subject to the technical evaluations as amended and read into the record by Commissioner Highsmith. Commissioner Hinkle, how do you vote? Yes, please, and I'll be stepping away for just a second. Fair enough. Thank you very much for letting us know. All those Mr. should be Chairman, cast. Mr. Chairman, yes, I, will be, I will be stepping away too. I have cast my vote. Yes, ma'am. Staff, ma all votes should be cast. Commissioner Coffee, vote. Commissioner Coffee, vote to us. Okay. Thank you. And that application is approved unanimously. Thank you, David. Real quick for the future, um, you might. I, I I would note why that uh, exhibit was confusing the site plan, right? I mean, the way that it is labeled does seem to indicate that Southwest Second is directly adjacent to that the back edge of that parking. Um, just something to keep in mind whenever your uh, applicants are putting together exhibits. Yes, sir. Understood. Next item on the agenda is item number twelve, and there oh. better not be any on street parking in this one. Is SPUD 1305, an application to rezone 9000 West Memorial Road from AA to SPUD 1305. Is the applicant with us? 
Yes, this is Millie Angier with Wallace Engineering, 410 North Walnut Avenue, Suite 200, Oklahoma City. I also have with me Alec Bass, also with Wallace Engineering. There will not be any on-street parking on this one. That is outstanding because that would be another 25 minutes minimum. <laughs> um, so, you want to note to staff's introduction to your item or the staff report? Oh, well, is that sorry? Is there anything you want to note to staff's introduction to the item? Um, yes, so this is currently a AA zoned site and it is 0 0.42 acres. Um, so obviously this does not comply with the current zoning. The lot width is 110, which is less than 150 and it's less than five acres. So we are wanting this bed to be developed in accordance to IT zoning. Okay. And let me ask you this, ma'am. This this is an existing site for your client. How, how long has this site been in existence? I think um, more than 10 years. So there was a variance granted back in 2010. Okay. Uh, and um, do you, did you talk to the neighbor next door to the west? No, we did not. Okay. Well, let's see if they joined us. They would undoubtedly have been noticed. I didn't receive a call from them, and nobody signed up to speak on the item, but... Uh, if you're here to be heard on SPUD 1305, uh, 9000 West Memorial Road, this is your opportunity. Uh, star 9 or Alt-Y on your computer. And while we wait to see if anybody is with us, there are two TEs. I'm assuming you've reviewed those and you're in agreement? Yes, we are in, in agreement to them. Okay. Uh, I don't have any objection to it. Um, this is a obviously an existing site. It's been in existence for some time. Um, and they're simply expanding the use of the existing use on the site. I would much prefer they do that than build another site somewhere else. So uh, I don't have any objection or concerns on it. Um, applicants in agreement with the PEs and no one has yet raised their hand or asked to be heard. So if there's other, unless there's other discussion from commissioners, I take a motion or recommendation to approve uh, SPD 1305 from somebody. Mr. Chairman, just a quick question. With sure. the expansion, we're just talking about we're just talking about the, um, we're not, there's a comment, <clears throat> excuse me, on page 10 about the location of towers. I just wanted to be clear about this. This is not an existing tower that's there, right? And there's no <coughs> to, to create one, correct? Right, well, it's, that's correct. It requests the use. It says SPD requests the telecommunication tower use, but not, does not indicate on the site plan where a tower may be located. But the TE, TE number one indicates that towers and antennas must, must meet all the specific use standards and conditions of 59.93.50. So does that mean that we would get some ability to approve it or, or disapprove it if they just suddenly decided they want a giant tower next to this person's house? It would mean that they would have to conform to that specific ordinance in order to install the tower, which is why I presume staff included the comment. Um, and there were no additional concerns that were illustrated in the staff report. I'll, I'll give staff the chance to comment on that, but that was why I sort of, that assuaged my concern was that the comment in the staff report you're referencing, I believe is offset by the requirement of TE1. I was no. hoping for that and assumed that. I just wanted to be certain before I made the motion. And they'd come to POA if they needed a variance on that ordinance. And also we heard from the client. Also, we heard from our client that they they don't plan to put a tower in there. Oh, okay. So the fact that they don't plan to put a tower in there, yeah, though, yeah. is not the same thing as saying that they, they don't won't or right can't to. put a tower yeah. in there. And I mean, it, the when you when you take something like this to the board of adjustment, uh, and the first thing that the applicant says is, "Well, it was approved in the zoning," I mean, that's yeah. kind of a leg up, right? So. So, I mean, if they don't, if they don't need to put a tower in there, I don't know why they're including the use unit. Yeah, yeah I, then let's delete the use unit, or unless staff can verify that that TE one sufficiently addresses the concern that I just just made. Um, yeah. I'll speak to that if you like, because I put it in there. Please, Sarah. Okay, Sarah Welch Planning. Um, when we when I was reviewing the spud, I wasn't clear whether or not. They, by putting a tower use in the spud, if it could just go anywhere on the property. So by meeting those conditions, that includes distance from residential, fall, width, things like that. And the the ordinance was changed recently so that if they cannot meet those conditions, then they must go get a special exception from board. Of 
Gotcha. That's, okay, that's, that answers it. Thank you, just, Sarah. That's what I figured. Just personally, can I can I ask staff to stop putting things into PEDs and SPDs that applicants are not asking for? Um, if if they don't need an antenna and tower usage use unit, why is it there? There's no reason for it. I'm, ha I'm happy. I'm not, you know, look, if the applicant is, is willing to strike it, which they indicated they are, I'm happy to take it out if that makes, you know, commissioners feel better. As I said, I, that's that 59 section that's referenced in the staff report sets all those things in place. I don't even think the tower could go here under those conditions of that ordinance without and without a variance from the Board of Adjustment, which I, you know, so there, there would have to be another hearing was my thought. But if the applicant will take it out, let's take it out. I don't care. It couldn't be a very big tower. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You were talking, you know, it's like I'm measuring the distance online right now from the structure, from the edge of the site to the house. It's, you know, like 80 feet. So it's going to be the shortest yeah. tower in history. Um, <laughs> Wallace Engineering, any objection to deleting use unit 8300.30? No objection. Yeah, okay. Unless that gonna... includes those monopoles or whatever. But, you know, I think that's a whole different Different yep. We're just going to delete 8300.30 as a TE. So um, if, if somebody wants to do that. I'm prepared, um, Mr. Chairman. I think we're ready. Um, I move uh, that we recommend approval of SPUD 1305 with, an, with the addition of TE3 to eliminate use unit 8300.30. <laughs> yeah. I have a motion. I'll take a second on PrimeGov. As soon as that's available, which it's not right now, that motion has been seconded by Commissioner Claire. So please cast your votes when available. Commissioner Hinkle, how do you vote? Yes, please. Okay. And Commissioner Coffey, are you still voice voting? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I voted yay. Okay. Excellent. Uh, staff, all votes should be cast. And that application is approved unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is item number thirteen. 13 is case PC10723, application to rezone 9841 Southwest 44th Street from AA to R1. Okay, is the applicant present? Brad Reed with Craft and Soul here on behalf of the applicant. I don't know before you take so long. Mr. Reed, what do you want us to know about your application? So we have 77 acres. Um, we're familiar with this area. It's uh, within 0.5 miles of the new on ramp for uh, the Turnpike on Morgan. Um, this area is developing in a R1 manner. Um, the comprehensive plan is at Urban Low. Um, there's no TEs on this, and staff, staff recommends approval. And uh, if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Okay. Um, Commissioner Coffey, this is your ward, ma'am, so I'll let you lead off our discussion. You're on mute, Commissioner Coffey. This is a pretty straightforward zoning application. I uh, <clears throat> have received one phone call regarding <clears throat> concerns uh, regarding Mustang Creek. <clears throat> However, there's only uh, one small tributary uh, of Mustang Creek running through this area. I have assured the uh, person making the phone call that uh, a flood drainage study will be done prior to final planting. And so I don't have other concerns, unless my fellow commissioners or anyone signed up to speak might have. I, I do not, does any, commissioners, any comments on this? And I do not have anybody signed up to speak. And at this point, I don't have any hands raised, but I guess I'll ask just for the sake of being certain, um, if you wanna be heard on PC 10723, uh, this is your chance. And you can push uh, the space bar on your computer or star six on your phone, that'll unmute you. I do not have anybody with a hand raised, which is star nine or alt Y. So unless there's further discussion, Commissioner Coffey, I think we're ready for a motion on this. I move approval of PC 10723. I have a motion to recommend approval to city council on PC 10723. I'll take a second on PrimeGov when that's available. And that uh, motion has been seconded by Commissioner Privet. Please cast your votes when available. Commissioner Hinkle, how will you vote on this item, sir? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, staff, I believe all votes have been cast, should be cast. Commissioner Privet. Uh, 
and that application uh, is recommended for approval unanimously. Yeah. Item number 14 was continued, so we're moving on to item number 15, uh, PUD 1813. Mr. Butler? Scott, real quick, I'm gonna I'm gonna step away again. This is Commissioner Highsmith. Okay. Just very briefly. No problem. Go ahead, Mr. Butler. Yes, I'm sorry, wait a second. I need to do the same. I apologize. <laughs> no problem. UD 1813, application by uh, to rezone 10317 North Hassett Street from R1 to PUD 1813. Excellent. Is the applicant present? Is the applicant for PUD 1813, this is item number 15 on today's agenda, present with us? I do have a hand raised. There we go. I'm going to allow you to talk, sir. So you should you should be. Can you hear me? I sure can. Start out by giving us your name and address for the record, please. Yes, John Corey. Uh, I represent Charles Taylor on this application. Uh, please, the commission, my client is is uh, wanting to do this, wanting this PUD for the sole purpose of processing firewood. He has, he's presently been operating a firewood business there for the last four years and, and some months. Um, this came about as a result of a neighbor that complained, I suppose, a year or so ago. Uh, before that, it was, it was, you know, no one had any qualms. That said, uh, he understands that we have to get a, you know, a zoning change in place to operate that business in a legal manner. Uh, we're here today uh, asking this commission for that. We understand there have been numerous protests. Um, and I, I understand most of those protests have to do with uh, the way the property may look. Uh, he has berms that he has, that he's piled on, on the north, I'm sorry, the south and the west east portion of the property to hide the firewood that just that is laid in piles to be processed over time. So people wouldn't have to look at the piles of firewood. Those, are the, those themselves have kind of created somewhat of an eyesore and that weeds grow on them and that kind of thing. He has since and I don't have pictures to show it to you, but uh, I will if, if uh, you all need to see them. Uh, I just don't have them today. Uh, uh, where he's he's cut those berms down, cut the weeds uh, down, and that kind of thing to make it look a little more presentable for the neighbors' uh, concerns in that regard. Uh, the other concerns they had were the road. The road, Haskett Road, uh, as I understand it, is a private road. But as I also understand it, I, I think it was dedicated back to the city some years ago by whoever the owner was of that road. That said, that road has not been maintained for, for as long as my client, his, his family has owned that property, which is over 20 years. Nothing has been done to that road. Um, yeah, there are some potholes in it. It's, it's basically broken down into gravel from whatever it was before um he is willing to maintain that road if it is private uh you know he's willing to maintain that road at his at his own cost uh pave it and do whatever needs to be done to uh get it in good order again uh and um also on that south side where he has the berms and the west side, he is willing to plant trees at whatever interval this commission would um, uh, would uh, require to shield anybody that, that has a problem visually with the property. Uh, there, is a, uh, there is a structure on the place that is a barn-like structure, but it also ha it has a residence inside it. So I don't know when that was built. I, I assume it was built, you know, well before R1 zoning came to the area uh, because it was, it's just, it's been there a long time. Uh, that said, he uses that obviously for his equipment and, and for where he, he stays quite a bit of the time. And so 
that said, we would ask the commission that we believe that, that, that in this area is kind of a, I would, I would characterize it as ranchettes. Uh, it goes, they, they're anywhere from, it looks to be two acres to 10 acres in, in uh, size to, for these plots around there. There are some old, old, old older houses. There are some newer houses, uh, but they're all on acreages. And there's, there's RVs, there's trailers, there's all kinds of things outside that people store as they would on any sort of ranchette or farm setting and even residential. And um, I don't believe that this is so incompatible with the area that it presents any sort of nuisance. Uh, about the only thing he does is he has logs hauled in there and they're already cut into firewood size, but they're big to where he has to split them. So they're just big logs that he has dumped and into piles. And then he works them over into firewood size uh, uh, logs. Um, so, he, so he has a real quiet running uh, splitter, I might add, and it's, it's not very loud. And that's about it. He has had to burn some chips and that kind of thing on occasion. Uh, and he's asked for permits to which he's been granted in the past. And that's about the only burning he does on the property. Um, I would think other people in the area burn as well, but I don't know that to be a fact. Uh, there, whatever the commission thinks is appropriate as far as screening, as far as access to the property, uh, he is willing to, to um, do in order to get this zoning so he can continue operating what's been a, a a pretty profitable business for him. He has, he has had a, um, his, his family's owned this lot for over 20 years, I believe. And he has had some problems uh, in his personal life to which he uh, has now worked his way out and, and got this business up and going. And now he's, he's, he's doing very well and um, would, would like to continue to do that. Uh, he, he creates taxes for the, for the city uh, through this business, he's not really bothering anyone, um, and we would just simply ask that the commission um, grant this PUD, uh, despite the numerous objections that have been lodged, and they seem to be all about the same kind of objection, one on top of the other. There's not anything uh, new that one has over the other, other than the road, uh, the noise. They just don't want a commercial business in the neighborhood. Uh, understandable. Nobody wants a manufacturing or anything like that in their neighborhood, but this isn't some, this isn't a typical neighborhood. This is a, like I said, a ranchette, almost country type setting. And Mr. Corey, your uh, time is, your time is run. If you give us the final comments here, we're going to continue to move the discussion forward a little bit. Sure. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and just leave it at that um, and let, you know, let you guys uh, voice your concerns. Yeah, I appreciate that. Commissioner Pennington, sir, this is your ward, so I'll let you lead our discussion here um, just for the applicant if you have questions at this time for them. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do have several questions. I want to begin by saying I have read and seen the numerous, numerous uh, letters, photos that I've uh, about this property and the existing operation. Um, and I'm very mindful and, and deeply concerned um, by the photos that I've seen of the existing operation. So I have a number of questions about that. First one, you mentioned, Mr. Corey, that, uh, that there, have, there have been some mitigation measures, but you did not bring a photo of those mitigation measures as far as the debris that's been left on this property, the trash that's been left on this property. The photos that I've seen are, are I, I would, it's, it's ridiculous what I've seen from these photos. So please give me some kind of explanation okay. as to what has been done currently. Those have been. I will, I'll tell you this. Hold on, I'm almost done, Mr. Kerr. Okay, this question. okay. okay. Um, and, and I will tell you this. I will not support this application without a photo evidence verifying that your client has complied with the things that, that you're about to tell me. So, so let's be clear about what has what exactly has been done that's different than these okay. very clear photos that I've already seen. Okay, those photos are from way back. Uh, I, he made this application last year. 
to which some objections were made. David Box was his uh, attorney at that time. They withdrew that application in the face of those objections um, to try to to try to mitigate what the concerns were of the neighborhood. Since that time, he has hired me to come in and reapply for that this PUD. That said, uh, he has been working diligently in, over the last few months to try to clamp the property. He's done. It's nothing like what you see in those pictures that have been proffered to this commission anymore. It's 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 way better than it was. It's not as good as it as it's going to be because there was so much uh, as far as the berms go and that kind of thing. A lot of dirt work that needed to be done on that. Um, but it's 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 significantly and totally noticeably better than than what those pictures show. Those pictures show all that the equipment and old junk laying around, all that's cleaned up. I, I, I am sorry, I don't have pictures to show this commission. If that's something, and I do think it probably is something you guys need to see before you make a decision on this. Maybe we should put this off a week or two and, and revisit it so you can see what's been done by my client in order to clean up the property and make it something that's that's not an eyesore uh and and as far as the wood there was wood piled up he's stacking that he's getting that in nice stacks um to where it doesn't look so bad uh from from the naked eye from any angle you'd like to look at it in into that property Mr. chairman and Mr. Yes, Chairman and Commissioner Pennington, can I ask what seems like the most obvious question in the world? Has there been any kind of meeting with the neighbors and no, the applicant no, no, no. so that they can air their concerns and ask their questions directly? Um, and Are you asking me? Uh, whoever. Okay. No, there hasn't. Not from our, not from our side. Um, we have not done that. And they just kind of kept coming. I, and so I suppose that's probably something we should do uh, since it does seem to be all, almost all of them have the same type of concern and maybe we can uh, alleviate a lot of them, if not all. Now that the weather is improving, I would encourage you to invite them to the site so that okay. they can see what it looks like now. Okay. And, um, you know, they can give us, uh, uh, I mean, you're, you're indicating that you're very willing to do whatever uh, needs to be done to exactly. ameliorate the concerns. It, you know, if, if it's the road, if it's the berms, if it's the visual, if it's the traffic, I mean, we need to know what those concerns are so that they can right. be addressed very specifically. Okay, that sounds good. Well, I would be glad to do that. I'm going to actually disagree. I think the record is very clear what the concerns are. And, and, and to be honest, um, I think if we can't work through what these issues, uh, what these issues are here and now, there's no need for a community meeting because it's not an appropriate use for the property. And so I just don't feel comfortable as, with us spending time having a community meeting, meeting, making these concerned neighbors wait weeks while we try to work through a deal that is that from the staff own uh, a recommendation should be denied. And so I just don't want to waste time. If, if there's no way to work through these. And, and I'm not entirely convinced that we have any evidence in the record to say that we can work through any of these. And Commissioner so Pennington, Commissioner Powers, if I can, um, just to sort of pull us back out to 25,000 feet or so, um, whether or not the site has been cleaned up is pretty irrelevant to me. The zoning application is very straightforward. And I think the staff did a good job of articulating what the real concerns are here. Let me just read a couple things from the staff report very briefly for the purposes of the record. Number one, uh, the PUD proposes outdoor operations related to a firewood business. Uses requested may generate noise, odor, and other operating effects adjacent to residential. Mr. Corey's comment that there's nothing objectionable about this use next to residential um, is, well, frankly disingenuous. Um, the, the, this whole area, the entire area on the zoning map with the exception of the hard corner of Eastern and Hefner is residential. There is nothing else here except residential. Um, the other thing our staff report indicates that was mentioned that I think is at least worth highlighting 
Hassett Road is a dead end private 20 foot street with access from Northeast 100th. The subject site appears to also have frontage, but no existing access from Joshua Drive, which is also a private street to the west. In addition to that, going back to the use, it says, although restricted to firewood only by the PUD, the proposed warehousing distribution and outdoor storage uses are industrial uses normally only allowed in I-1 or I-2. Uh, arguably, I-2 is probably outside of I-3 is the least compatible use to drop down in the middle of an entire section of property, section meaning a legal section that's residential in nature. This is, I mean, it's, we've had people come in here before um, that are objecting to applications and, and use the phrase spot zoning, uh, typically use it incorrectly. I'm not so sure this wouldn't actually be if we were to recommend approval on it. There's nothing else here that would justify allowing this use. So whether he's cleaned it up, whether it's neatly stacked firewood or, you know, spread out firewood or trash or no trash, the idea that we would allow this here seems even crazy that we're, we would discuss it. And that's just my opinion. I just, there's no way you're going to get me there. Um, so I'm kind of of the opinion of Commissioner Pennington that taking two weeks or a month or six months, it's not going to change my vote. Um, even before we hear from the protesters, the application, I think on its face speaks for itself. Never mind. The, the countless letters we got from, from protestants who make the same case. Um, if there's other commissioners who feel differently, I think we should hear from you guys before we hear from the people who are signed up to speak. Otherwise, Commissioner Pennington, with your blessing, I'll call on a couple people. I do have one person hand raised and we may have some others, so. Well, I just, before we get to their comments, Mr. Chairman, I, I just want to be very clear. I, I share them and they're very clearly stated on the record. I share them. And so I know that the neighbors who may want to make sure that their voice is being heard, trust me when I say, I, I do not support this application. I do not. So, um, and it sounds like there's consensus about, about that on this commission as well, because the evidence is very clear, all the reasons why we should not support this. So I just want that to be clear as the neighbors are about to speak. Yeah. I'm gonna agree with Commissioner Pennington. There is nothing that can be said or done that's gonna get me there on this. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm assuming that the people that, that, that are, have their hands raised are listening to this. I will give them a moment uh, just to comment in case there's things that we're not aware of they want to comment on. So the first person I'll call on here that I have is Danny Morton. Uh, Mr. Morton, uh, if you'd like to speak, sir, this would be your opportunity and I'll allow you uh, into the meeting to speak. So if you can unmute your phone or your computer. There you can are. Can you hear me? I certainly can. Um, Daniel Morton, 10500 Joshua Drive. So I own and reside on the five acre parcel immediately north of the subject property. Uh, my property abuts the entire northern side of his property. And I've lived here since October of 2010. Um, <clears throat> I'm here on behalf of both myself and many of my neighbors. I think it's true that 19 properties were notified of this PUD and that the owners of 14 of those properties have, object, have objected in very strong terms. And those objections represent more than 90%, well, about 90% of the land in the notification zone. So I think you know that the opposition is very strong. And then multiple other neighborhood residents have also sent in objections particularly um, a group who live along 100th Street sent in a petition, which I don't know if the commissioners ever saw, but it was a petition signed by 10 people who live along 100th Street. Yeah, Mr. Morton, we have a number, a, a plethora of letters and people who have <laughs> sent in uh, letters of objection. And I'm assuming that your objection is based on the conversation we've had relating to noise and issues and commercial use in the area and the lack of compatibility in the neighborhood. Is that all a fair summary? That is a very fair summary, yes. Um, and I would like to say that his lawyer is being very disingenuous. Nothing has materially changed on that property since the last application. And I have sent you photographs taken as late as yesterday showing the trash on the property. Okay. It is a disgrace. The noise is um, unbearable to me. It's not just a noise splitter. There are um, a, often two chainsaws going at the same time. There is a bobcat 
um, front loader that is moving logs around the property constantly. It has essentially denuded most of the property of um, any ground cover. So in fact, the last couple of dry windy days, there has just been dirt blowing across my property. Um, Mr. Mr. Morton, if I may, have you contacted the city of Oklahoma City via the Action Center or other ways to report this activity in the past? Uh, people have filed reports through the Action Center for 10 years. Well, you've been to district court. I've been living yeah. here. The Action Center finally started enforcement actions against him last September. And that was because another resident contacted DEQ, who got involved and worked with the city to get them to actually do something to clean up the trash. Got it. Okay. Is there, is this, I mean, this just seems very straightforward. And I'm not trying to cut you off, Mr. Morton, but I, I think we are fully versed in the issue here. Your photographs that you've provided, especially the one that was shown from like two days ago, uh, I think really speaks for itself. Um, is there, is there anything else you need us to know before we ask the same question to the other folks? I just want to say that the noise from the chainsaws and the front loader often make it very uncomfortable for me to just sit outside and enjoy my space. So I come in and I can hear it inside. It's obviously less inside and a little bit like that fly that you can't quite find and kill. But yeah, and that's pretty much what I want to say. Thank you, Mr. Morton, for your time and joining us uh, today. Uh, we, we appreciate you making the time to be with us. I have another person who signed up to speak. Uh, Mr. Garrett, are you with us? Can you hear me? You're on uh, mute, Mr. Garrett. I can unmute you here. There you go. Is that better? Can you hear me now? We can hear you. Go right ahead, sir. I, my name is William Pat Garrett. I live at 1705 East Hefter Road. It's about a half mile from this property. I've been there for a little over 45 years. Uh, this neighborhood on 100th Street is mainly residential. Um, I've been involved through uh, a little neighborhood association. It's really uh, the Lone Star Neighborhood Association. This is mainly acreages, small lots, uh, residential. It's not appropriate zoning for an industrial use in this neighborhood. And we would, uh, I think it, the staff report hit it right on the, on the nail that this is not appropriate use in this area. And I know the neighbors have tried many times to get this uh, illegal action, action stopped and have been, uh, haven't had a whole lot of success in that. And uh, it would be helpful if, if that was to take place, but this is really inappropriate. We'd ask that you deny this application. Thank you, Mr. Much, uh, very much, Mr. Gear, for being with us today. We appreciate your time as well. Uh, I do not have any other hands raised. Um, I'd like to add one thing to what uh, what the gentleman said. We gave them notice of violation. They went to court and got an ex parte order restraining us from any any further set any further uh, prosecution or action against the property, and that was done. Trying to see when the order was, but like I said, it was an ex parte order. Um, they're not supposed to do that against the city because we're over here. We can almost always get the court if we need to. But I wanted to make the commission aware of that fact. Um, that just in case you said it, uh, Mr. Brummett, that's Dan Brummett from the municipal counselor's office. So when was that action filed? When? Yeah, when was it initially filed by the city? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. We gave him notice of violation. I think he filed his uh, lawsuit before he was before he was cited. Okay. Uh, so to prevent us from in taking any further action, enforcement actions against the property. Understood. And that was that was filed. The case was filed. Uh, February 11th. Okay. Of this I, year. I, I, think, I think there's probably a discussion here to have in other business um, without belaboring it while we're talking about this specific item. This is the second meeting in a row where we've had what in my view is an egregious violation of the zoning ordinances that have not been enforced. 
or can't be enforced or we have trouble enforcing, which is just crazy to me. I, I think we need to maybe discuss some sort of ordinance or, or you know, uh, co-discussion with city council about um, enforcement mechanisms for our ordinances, because the idea that you could engage in this activity in these photographs for any length of time without receiving a, a, a zoning violation and then the city's ability to enforce its zoning ordinances to me seems like crazy. I take at face value the comment that was made by the protestant that there's been complaints going on for 10 years. There's no way for us to verify that. But even if it's taken a year, that's entirely too long to allow something like that to take place without action. I, I, but I'm really bothered by that. I, I hope other commissioners are troubled by that too. If your ordinances don't have teeth, they have no meaning. Um, and it, it seems to me like we have that problem. Commissioner, I, I would say that our, it's, it's not just our ordinance. There's a state statute that authorizes us to go on the property and give notice to the property owner. And if they don't clean the property up, we can do it. Um, like I say, that's a state statute on accumulation of trash and debris and high weeds and things like that that allows us to go on and, and if they don't if they don't clean it up in a certain period of time, we can go in and clean it up. Okay. All right, fair enough. It looks like I have someone who's raised their hand. Um, Bill Collins, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, sir, I can. Can you hear me? I can. Well, sir, I'm I'm an attorney. I represent Danny Morton. Uh, he's already said most of everything that I had to say, but, but you know, th this property, uh, Mr. Collins, if you could, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Would you give us your address, please? Yes, sir. It's 2500 South Broadway, Suite 140 in Edmond. Excellent. And, I'll, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I think I'll, I'll give you 60 seconds just because I think I know where we are here, but I definitely want to make sure we capture your comment. Okay, sir. Uh, I've done zoning work for 45 years That's now, and this is as classic a case of spot zoning as I have ever seen. Uh, you, know, you, you read textbooks, and this is a perfect example of, of a spot zoning case. To put an industrial facility in the middle of a residential neighborhood, access to it is only by residential streets. You know, 100th is a collector street for residences. Uh, Hassett is a private drive for residences. Uh, it's back in this area. I can't think of a worse use. Uh, this is absolutely antithetical to a residential setting. Uh, these people, you know, they, they took this property and pardon my language, they in, in essence, they bastardized it. And now they're trying to legitimize it by getting the zoning through. And that I can't imagine a, a worse circumstance that there could be for this property. Uh, I've been out there and I've seen it myself. Nobody's mentioned the two trailers that, have, that were moved in on Monday. Yeah. They're, they're visible, visible from Hassett. Sure. Uh, these, these, are, these are all the issues that you know, we, we talked about and we discussed and I, I think we're very clear on. Um, and, and I think we're to a point really where if it isn't crystal clear to everybody listening, I think I've already counted to five. So, um, yes, and, uh, and I see no point in having any meeting with anybody other than you all and city council later on. Well, Mr. Collins, we appreciate you being with us uh, and for your client being with us today as well. At this point, I'm gonna turn it over to the commission because I think we've heard what we need to uh, as it relates to the, the comments are pretty generalized at this point. Um, Commissioner Pennington, I'll turn it back over to you, sir. Um, I just, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I just wanna be completely clear and um, so that the record's clear for the city council, so that the record's clear for any um, any future potential legal action. Um, I am going to make the motion to, uh, to deny this application on the basis of, its, of the total incompatibility of this application. On the basis of the use, on the basis of the uses, on the basis of the traffic, on the basis of the infrastructure for uh, the roads, on the basis of their non-compliance with existing ordinances, on the basis of the, the uh, noise, and, and the disruption of the use of the neighboring properties that will occur. Um, I, I wholeheartedly uh, am outraged by this, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. And I, I share your, your belief that we need to have a serious discussion about enforcement 
um, in, later on in this meeting, in the new business portion of this meeting, because this is an outrage. So um, that's that's what I have. I'm prepared to I make have that motion. A, uh, motion motion to recommend denial to city council on PUD 1813. That motion has been seconded by Commissioner Claire. So a vote yay would be an affirmative vote to deny the application, just to be clear. Uh, and with that, we'll cast our votes when available. Commissioner Hinkle, how do you vote? Vote to deny. So you vote in the affirmative, okay. I think all votes have been cast, staff. And that application is unanimously denied. Um, next item on the agenda, item 16 was continued. Item 17 is a comp plan amendment application, Mr. Butler. Yes, this is a, a CPA number two for this year, 2021, and it's consideration of a map amendment lifting the urban future layer from urban low intensity uh, on a 361 acre tract located north of Southwest 59th Street and between Sarah Road and North County Line Road. And this is, uh, this is one uh, associated with a case that the Planning Commission saw last, uh, at the last meeting. And we have a presentation here uh, that uh, Kim Cooperhart is going to take us through. Hi, good afternoon, Commissioner Cravens and commissioners. Uh, this CPA and the rezoning uh, from PUD 1812 got a little bit separated from each other. And so we're bringing them back together. You may recall seeing this, um, you approved it on March 25th. The purple area that you see on this slide is the applicant's request for the PUD and was their original request for the CPA. When staff looked at the area and they looked at the provision of services that have increased since this was designated urban future, we wanted to propose to you that the larger pink area is where we'd like to lift the urban future as well. And our intention is to uh, take this on uh, to the final hearing with the um, rezoning request and have them presented to council on the same docket. This is the revised land use map. Thank you, Cindy. Next. Existing conditions, as you can see, we've got urban future around, we've got some rural low, and the, again, the subject site is outlined in the dark blue, and we're looking at removing the urban future in the larger area surrounding. Cindy, go ahead. These are our existing conditions out of the plan. Cindy, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, I've got to step away just for a second. Existing conditions, um, staff uh, was uh, satisfied that this met the, um, the conditions for lift, lifting the urban future, as you can see, with uh, fire and water and sewer service. Cindy, go ahead. Again, existing conditions for land use around the subject site. Cindy, go ahead. And our findings and recommendations. Happy to answer any questions. Oh, sorry, I muted myself. Um, thank you very much, Kim, for your presentation on that. Uh, commissioners, any questions of staff? Hearing none, uh, this is, uh, Commissioner Claire, this is your ward. That should be ward three, shouldn't it? Yeah, it's ward three. Commissioner Coffey, this is, that's, that's an error in the staff report. Commissioner Coffey, this is your ward, ma'am. Do you have any comments or questions on this? Uh, <clears throat> no, I don't. Uh, I'm prepared to uh, make a motion. I think we're ready for it. Okay, I think based on, on the staff's recommendations, I would move uh, approval of the, uh, Request, uh, uh, I may recommend approval of CPA uh, 2021-00002. I have a motion to approve the comp plan amendment, lifting the urban future layer in favor of the urban low intensity based designation. And it has been seconded by Commissioner Power. So please cast your votes when available. Commissioner Hinkle, it's your time to shine. Yes, please. All votes should be cast. And that application has been approved unanimously. That is the last item for individual consideration on today's agenda. The other items have been continued. We do have an issue, uh, Mr. Brummett, I'm not sure how to handle. Uh, there was an item on the consent agenda 
today under, un I'm sorry, not consent, forgive me, under uncontested continuance is SPD 1301. Apparently we deferred the item in action to April the 22nd and the applicant actually requested that that be continued to May 13th. Is there anything we can do at this juncture to rescind that vote and, and offer that continuance to May the 13th or at this point, does it need to go on the April 22nd agenda to be continued again? Could you help me there? Is Dan still with us? I assumed he was, but- He's muted. He's talking, but he's muted. Oh, Mr. Brummett, you're on mute. There we go. Um, you can rescind your previous action or reconsider your previous action, I'm sorry. Vote on that, and if that's approved, then you can then the continuance will be before you again. You can vote on that. Okay, so in other words, we need a motion from somebody on the commission to rescind the the vote to, for the continuance request to item eighteen SPD thirteen oh one. Am I saying that correctly? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll make that motion since it's my award. Thank you very much, Commissioner Powers. Can I get a second on that motion to rescind? A prime bill. I think we can do it. Can we do it through prime government? Do we need a voice vote this fall? Looks like it. I don't know. That's uh, okay. They're working on it. We'll give them <laughs> just a minute. Throw, throwing you a curveball. We'll see how good you are. Oh, look at that. Oops. Okay. I have a motion and a second from Commissioner Privet to rescind the continuance for SPUD 1301. Please cast your votes when available. Commissioner Hinkle. Yes, please. Okay, all votes should be cast. Hey, Mr. Chair, this is Rusty. Um, maybe it's not this complicated, but if there was anybody interested in that matter that the staff's aware of that would have thought that it was continued to the 15th or whatever, the 22nd, if we could be sure to reach out to them, they might've moved on put it on their schedule and, and not know the new date. Totally agree. Yeah, that's a great point. Yep. Um, I, I'm in pretty close contact with all those folks, so I'll make sure everybody knows. Yep. Um, so that motion to rescind was approved unanimously. So at this point, we need a motion for a continuance for SPUD 1301, item 18 on today's agenda to May the 13th, 2021. I'll make that motion. Okay, I have a motion and I'll take the second on PrimeGov once staff shows us some real black belt PrimeGov moves here. <laughs> this is this is big stuff. There had to have been a training on this. Let me know if we need to voice vote this staff. Oh, no, look at that. Okay, I have a motion and a second from Commissioner Highsmith to continue item 18 on today's agenda, SPUD 1301 to the May 13th, 2021 meeting. Please cast your votes. Commissioner Hinkle, how do you vote? Yes, please. Staff, all votes should be cast. And that continuance request is approved unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Brummett, for your assistance there, sir. Mr. Cravens? Uh, yes, ma'am. Do we need to vote on the remaining items? Oh. No, it was just that item. So to be clear, um, Paul, all we were doing, item 18 was being removed from the block of uncontested continuance requests, which were item 18, 19, and 20, and 21. Those items were stipulated in the record with their continuance dates as presented in the agenda. We amended item 18's uh, continuance request to May the 13th at the request of the applicant to give them more time. Okay. It was just Thank for you. item 18. So item 19 would still be heard April the 22nd. Item 20 would still be heard April the 22nd and item 21 would be heard May the 27th. I feel like the record's pretty clear here, but if we need to do something else before we adjourn this meeting, would you let us know? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, 
So that is the end of our, our additional items. And so we'll move to communication and reports. Uh, Planning Commission committees, we don't have a formal committee, but I believe um, the committee that was going to discuss kind of legislative related functions was going to visit um, to see if there was more discussion we need to have. Somebody want to fill us in on where we are there? I don't think we really have a report, though. Okay. We can, you want to just table that for now? Please. Okay. Uh, Planning Commission members, uh, Commissioner Claire? Uh, nothing for me. You get the Gold Star Award today for that parking catch. <laughs> that was, that would have gone right through. That was great. And I love that it happened to uh, Mr. Box. Um, so that's wonderful. Well done. Uh, Commissioner Powers? I don't have anything. Okay. Um, Commissioner Coffey? Nothing, please. Okay. Commissioner Privet? I'm good. Okay. You're fine. Commissioner Hinkle. Oh, I'd like to thank Larry McAtee and James Griner for their service and welcome Barbara Young and Bradley Carter to the horseshoe. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, that's well said. They were both great, great public servants to the city of Oklahoma City and certainly um, not taking any away from Councilman Griner, but Councilman McAtee, 20 years of service has got to be worth something. That's a long time to take phone calls. So... Commissioner Highsmith? For 12 grand a year. Yeah. All good here, man. Okay, thank you very much. Commissioner Pennington? Uh, just to follow up on my statement that I made about that last contingent item, I think we do need to really consider what are the things that need to be done to increase our enforcement capability. And I admit that I don't have a full understanding of how that process works, what it all looks like. I'm an uninformed citizen when it comes to that. I just know that clearly something needs to be done so that something doesn't have to go on for as long as, as this allegedly had, these violations allegedly had. So I don't know, if Mr. Chairman, if this is something maybe the legislative group needs to talk about as far as if there's any legal reforms that need to be made as far as the laws of Oklahoma City or, or what's the appropriate avenue for us to investigate or think about this issue. Um, but I just know that it needs to be addressed because I, I felt really bad for these neighbors who have had to endure this for a long time. Yeah, I was going to bring this up in other business just to talk about it. And, and, and I really, I was hoping that Dan would, you know, kind of give us some more color uh, during the municipal counselor's report. Gotcha. Well, then I have nothing else, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, Commissioner LaForge? No, sir. Okay. Uh, I don't have anything. Um, planning department? Yeah, um, just wanted to mention that uh, we will be sending you out the... Um, revised copy of the bylaws. Uh, there's still a few kind of undecided things that you'll see in there. Um, and uh, if we could get your comments back, I think we can have it on the, we'll give you a couple of weeks and we can put it on the agenda for uh, May 13th, we're thinking. Um, so just be watching for that in the next day or two. Um, and then, uh, well, I think that's it for today. Okay, great, thank you. Um, before I go to development services, I forgot I did have one thing. Commissioner Pennington, just FYI, I will be absent from the meeting on April the 22nd. So just you'll just need to be prepared to chair that meeting. You will be in attendance, Kurt. You'll be able to be in attendance? Yes, I will be in attendance. Okay, excellent. Um, development services? Uh, nothing, sir. Okay, great, thank you. Municipal Counselor's Office? No, oh, sir. Dan, if, if you could, I, I mean, could you kind of explain to us now that we're not in the middle of an item, what what happens, what happens when a complaint comes in uh, to like a zoning violation request like that? Code enforcement comes out. I remember from last meeting that they really can't even like look over a fence or something like that. It has to be something they can notate from the boundary of the property line. Is that correct? No, it's not the it's any place that's open to the public. Uh, it's common that uh, they will look over a fence or something like that, particularly from like a neighbor's yard. But like those uh, photographs today, uh, they're taken from the public right of way. Um, anything, they can go up, they go up to the structure basically, if it's open to the public. Okay, and then so that zoning request, or that zoning violation is validated by a code enforcement officer. Yes, sir. So they come back how long at that point does it take to for there to be some sort of a remedy? Um, they have to give notice. It's about, and then there's about, I think it's a 20 day notice to uh, uh, 
remedy the violation. And then if they don't do it, uh, they get they get a citation. Okay, and then and then once they're issued the citation for the zoning violation, th then what? How long does the city have to wait to try to enforce that citation? Uh, as soon as they can get it on the uh, municipal court docket. Got it. Okay. So and then for for everybody's benefit, let's say they go to municipal court and they're found to be in violation of the zoning ordinance, then what? Um, if we get, uh, we like to get several citations and then we can go to district court and get an injunction to, to enforce the city ordinance. Got it. So if you just had to guess out of curiosity, how long does it take in a, in a uh, an average series of events to from the time the citation is issued to the time you could get an injunction, what does that time frame typically look like? It's hard to say just because was, you don't know when the a judge is going to hear and that sort of thing, but it's probably uh, 60 to 90 days. 60 to 90 days. Okay. And then I'm kind of almost embarrassed to ask this question, but I can't, I, would, as a lawyer, I'm embarrassed to ask this question. I mean, um, would a, a member of the public have private standing to take private action against a neighbor who is violating a zoning ordinance? Yes. They would? Yes. So they do have the ability to, to privately enforce that too? Yes. It is, it is a nuisance per se. Got it. Because Okay. That's how they have stand. Okay. I got it. Okay. All right. That makes sense to me. It, any other commissioners have questions on that? I, I'm surprised that we don't get more questions from the public about this, but these last two meetings really bother me because in each of these instances, it seems like, you know, we've had people that are enduring what is seems egregious violation of these zoning ordinances for a period of years, not, not even 90 days. Yeah. A decade. A decade for both of them. I mean, what do we do to expedite that type of stuff? Um, that seems crazy to me. I mean, I'm, I'm a little less bothered that you have a private cause of action. And that's that's easy for me to say because I could take that action if I wanted to as a private citizen. But a lot of people probably are not in the position to do that. Um, yeah, you don't have to pay a retainer. I'm going to leave. All right. Sorry about that. Sorry to interrupt. No, you're fine. Thanks. Bye. Well, that's true. I mean, those those of us with a license to practice law don't have that same hurdle or obstacle to overcome. You know, one of I think it might be helpful to us to have the code enforcement folks come and talk to us and and explain a little bit about you know what if any obstacles they have to enforcement and and you know the approach that they take to these and and why it seems to be. I mean, for, for a lot of people, the idea of code enforcement is just, you know, a, a, a pointless exercise in frustration and futility. And, you know, during the time, the few times that I've ever dealt with them, they've been nothing but uh, polite and, um, you know, willing and professional. So I'm not quite sure what the issues are there, but it might be good to have them come and tell us. One of the things that I think has been a huge, huge uh, point of uh, frustration for people in cases where I have dealt with uh, members of the public is, is that if action is taken by the property owner to, you know, file an application either to rezone or for a variance or for any kind of municipal action, the, the uh, enforcement is just held in abeyance uh, until whatever that request is has been uh, brought to full fruition. And of course, for people who are not acting in good faith, that can require, that can involve a lot of continuances and things just being put off and, you know, changing their mind about, you know, how they want to go about it, maybe changing from, you know, board of adjustment to, to zoning to, you know, and, and I think this is such a very, very common, common area of frustration with the public. So much so that, that I frequently hear people say that, you know, zoning is a big waste of time because nothing is done to enforce it. 
it's, it's, I mean, it seems like a legitimate concern to me when you see things like we've seen the last two, the last two meetings. Um, I, I don't know what can be done other than, you know, just to kind of relay this to our city council people. Um, I'm certainly happy to relay this to uh, Mark Stonecipher for Ward 8. And um, I, I would encourage you guys to relay some concern to your respective council people as well if you maintain, you know, some, some type of correspondence or communication with them. I just think they need to be aware that this is a real issue because by the time it gets to them at a council hearing, you got a 9-0 recommendation to denial and it doesn't seem like there's a discussion that needs to be had. So it's kind of just brushed under the rug. Um, you know, I should have... I should have relayed to the Jordans to be sure and contact their council person, uh, Todd Stone, um, you know, yeah. to report things like that. So, you know, he's aware for sure, Scott, because I know okay. all the violations that have been submitted. Okay. Uh, interesting. All right. Mr. Um, Chairman, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, just, just quickly here. We just, as far as um, our analysis for approving a PUD like this in the future, in which there has been consistent documented non-compliance. Surely that, what is our ability, let me ask Dan this, what is our ability to use that as, as, a, as a basis for denial of an application? The failure to act in good faith, the failure to comply with existing ordinance. That's always that relevant. A factor? Sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, no, you go ahead. Um, that, that, that is always good evidence, particularly in a municipal court case, but when we go to district court to try to seek an injunction that's like that property today, you look at those photographs, and I mean, it's it's obvious that some it's not they're not just stacking firewood. So we would use that as evidence, and we probably take have some of the property owners come down and testify. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Brown, very much for uh, helping us out understanding that issue a little bit better. Um, Citizens to be heard. I don't have anybody with a hand raise or anything, but. Okay. Um, other business. We were talking about the ordinance enforcement. Um, I, 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 will, I will email um, Councilman Stonecipher on that and just try to ask about some enforcement issues and maybe try to gather some information and report back to you guys. Um, so if there's no other discussion between us, I think we're ready for a motion to adjourn. I'll take it. So move. Okay. Better second. Yes, please. Any opposed? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Everybody have a great Friday and a wonderful weekend, and uh, I'll see you guys in a month. Thank you. You too. Yeah. Thank you.